minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Coolest reptile network in the world. Welcome to Trap Talk with MJ, episode 479. We got the great and powerful Brad Boa and his son Kevin of Brad Boa Reptiles in the building tonight. And I'm so stoked. You have no idea. It's been about three years, if not over three years, since I've had his son Kevin on. But tonight we got we got the big dog. We got his dad tonight. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna be one for the books tonight. But uh, what is good, everyone? I'm your boy MJ. Hope everyone's having a glorious Thursday night out there. Just this close to the weekend, hang in there, man. And I, I know tonight will help you guys feel better about getting closer to the weekend because all about having fun here, man. If you're into keeping reptiles, you want to learn more, you're trying to get the ends on certain, you know, demographics of the reptile hobby, then do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So like, oh, you'll be on top of every single podcast, every single segment to your phone. Get notified, man. You can listen to Trap Talk Reptile Network on all the major audio platforms, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple. So don't forget, um, Wherever you listen to the network, thank you so much. It really means a lot. Um, if you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to get more out of every episode, if you want to get behind the scenes, if you want to get invited to special events and all that great stuff, then look no further than joining the Trap Talk Patreon family. Very first link in the description below. Click on that link. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Get connected to the Discord. Over 200 trappers. Uh, the Instagram group chat is an amazing place also. So thank you for all the love and support, Patreon members. You guys are my heart. I love interacting with my Patreon members every day. Every day I'm super active with all of them. So appreciate all the love and support from you guys, man. You guys are my heart. Um, early birds, who's here, man? I want to shout out to people who are ready for tonight because I know there's mad fools ready for this episode. Like my, my homie right here, my big dog. Uh, 1776 Exotics, Big Mike, the OG Trap Talk Patreon member. Literally my first Patreon member in the building. Appreciate you, Mike. Thank you so much. My sis Lily in the building. What is good? Trap Talk Patreon member. Reper NorCal, Bay Area, all day, every day. That's my girl right there. Appreciate you. All City Serpents, homie James, Trap Talk Patreon member, all day, every day. Appreciate you. Scalp Fins and Feathers, homie Josh, Trap Talk Patreon member, all day, every day. Local Cali Reptile Keeper, super sick. The homie Matt B in the building. What's up, Matt? Trap Talk Patreon member, all day, every day. Celtic Reptiles in the building. What is good, Celtic Reptiles? Thanks for tapping in. The homie Aaron in the building. Balls of Paradise, Trap Talk Patreon member, all day, every day. Hella. Appreciate you, Aaron. Thanks for tapping in. KMS Reptiles in the building. What is up, KMS? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, Alex M305 Royals in the building. B, -b, 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 B unit family. Shout out to my B unit family members out there. Eric Morris Factory, another B unit family all day, every day. Willie B in the building. What's up, Willie B? Always a pleasure. Appreciate you so much. MKB Reptiles, my dog right here. Trap Talk. Patreon member all day, every day. He's got the itch for monitors. Now Condros, he's he's on his way. I'm so proud of this guy. MKB Reptiles. Go give him a follow. And my guy right here, the young hitter, JD, a.k.a. Joey D, Meteoric Serpents, one of the hosts of Friday Nights. Thank God it's Colubrates. Tomorrow it's going down with him. So set your reminder, okay? Please go give this guy a listen. Not only here on the network, but on his own podcast, Colubrate Corruption, all right? Go check him out, Meteoric Serpents on YouTube. And JD, thanks for being here. Appreciate your Trap Talk page. Remember, JQ coming off a crazy rager. This guy went to a fest somewhere, and uh, I think it was called Tortuga. Whew, hope you're doing all right, man. Looks like you killed it that entire weekend. Shout out to my dog, Big J, JQ, Ball Pythons, V Unit family. And here he is, Bill Arena Reptiles, Big E Top G. Monday night's finest right here. I got to tell you, appreciate you so much, Big E. Uh, Trap Talk Patreon member, V Unit boss member, all day, every day. Scott Morph Magic Exotics. What is up, Scott Morph Magic? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, Bradley P in the building. What's up, Bradley P? Trap Talk Patreon member, all day, every day. Royal Serpents in the Building. Let me get to Royal Simmons. Why is it clicking? There it is. Jam Jamal, Jamil, Jamil. I'm gonna say Jamil. Sick name. Appreciate you. The fishy plumber in the building. What is up, the fishy plumber? Father Blue. Hey, I am so happy for this guy. This guy right here has a lot of W's coming his way because he just puts in his work. He's passionate, and he has a lot of haters. And I gotta tell you from personal experience, whenever you have a lot of haters, success just comes, man. So 
Shout out to my man, Eddie. Go give, my, go give this guy a follow right now. Father Blue, all right? Let his content do the talking for you, all right? Don't listen to the noise. This guy right here is the truth, all right, as far as his passion for the animals. And you can tell through all his content. So my boy, Eddie, Father Blue, thanks for, ta for, for tapping in. And you are going to see a round two trap talk coming soon with the homie, Eddie. Uh, above all scales, trap talk patron member all day every day. That's my, my dog right here, my Hawaiian player, trap talk patron member who lives in Virginia. But still, he's still Hawaiian, and it's my dog. Appreciate you so much, Shane. Uh, Mercury Exotics in the building. What is good? Oh, we got a hitter in the building. Leviathan Snakes. What is up, Leviathan? All right. Talk about somebody that needs to come to Trap Talk for sure. These two. I like this couple. And we're going to end it in style with Leviathan because I got to tell you, purple is my favorite color. One of my favorite colors. And I'm not saying like I'm begging for a Leviathan shirt, but if, if it ever happened to come across an opportunity, I would rock one because I like purple. So... Thank you, Leviathan, for tapping in. Go check them out. Very relevant in the game. And, you know, hopefully once someday they can come to Trap Talk if they're down. I don't know. I have to hit up the homie, Steve. So appreciate you guys. All right, listen. Beyond excited. All right. Um, I'm not going to lie. When I originally reached out to Brad Boa three years ago, he agreed to do the podcast. And, he, yeah, he did tell me his, his son Kevin was coming on, but, like, very last minute. I thought it was him. But – through, he basically threw his son to the wolf and fucking threw Kevin at me. And poor Kevin, he uh, he did his best. But I'm dude, this is Kevin's grown a lot. Let me just tell you, for the last three years, this kid is like he's not not really a kid anymore. I, I gotta tell you, every time I ran into Kevin at the booth holding it down, I'm like, bro, you're not the kid I interviewed. Like you're holy shit, you know. So he's a lovely girl now, and just like he's kind of grown up. So I don't really want to call Kevin a kid, but I just want to say that you know I had Kevin on knowing that I have so many questions about Brad and his brand, Brad Boa, because it's attached to a lot of history that a lot of you guys don't know. You know what I mean? A lot of genetics that flourished where we're at today. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm talking about some pioneer type shit. All right. And it's all going to be talked about tonight. So do me a favor. If you're into this kind of uh, nerdy ball Python talk, if you want to kind of even tap into like what's relevant, the cutting edge, we're, we're also talking to somebody who's on the front leading like uh, as far as the sunset project yeah all that sunset lovers out there this guy right here is leading the leading the pack when it comes to sunset stuff all right so there's so much to come down for tonight so hope you guys are ready and shout to the early birds all right now before we get into tonight's episode let's all do our part by supporting us arc second link in the description below make sure you click on it um usarc.org all right it lowest five dollars a month it costs to become a member and if you keep reptiles, it makes a lot of sense for you to become a U.S. ARC member. Help us get these numbers up because all we need is these U.S. ARC membership numbers to look very nice when it comes to battling legislations in our backyard. All right. There's a lot of work going behind all this at U.S. ARC. Thank you, Phil Goss. Thank you, everyone at U.S. ARC Florida. And thank you personally if you're supporting U.S. ARC already. Thank you for being on the team. And yes. All right. Let's talk about tonight's sponsor. Who's tonight's sponsor? Conduit Constrictors. All right, shout out to Steve and his family over at Conduit Constrictors. Go give him a follow right now on Instagram and be ready because he is coming to Trap Talk Monday night in two weeks. Going to be a heavy episode because this man's project's definitely not one to be sleeping on. I'll tell you that much. I'm enjoying to see where he's headed with his projects and definitely doing him and his sons are doing the homework that it needs to be done to stay relevant in the Vault Python game. And I have a lot of questions for uh, Steve and his uh, his sons and the, the, the Conduit Constrictor brand. But for now, go give him a follow. You can check out their Instagram in the link in the description below and appreciate the support. All right. Also, tonight's episode is brought to you by The Chipper, number one cocoa substrate in the game. Go to cocodoo.com. All right. Your entire order to get 24% off by typing in TrapFam24 in the promo code. All right. Shout out to Chipper. Seriously, I love my cocoa to go. Cannot wait. About to stack everything in here. Cocoa to go from head to toe. Didn't mean to rhyme. That was sick. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Coco Dude. Again, cocodoo.com. Promo code TRAPFAM24, all right? What you see behind me, Focus Cube Habitats, number one PVC enclosures in the game, best designs. Nobody's doing it like Focus Cube, man. We're talking like the Louis Vuitton of enclosures right here, all right? And they're affordable, all right? Not Louis Vuitton prices, but please head over to Focus Cube Habitats Instagram and also go to focuscubehabitats.com and go look at their 30 plus different designs, anything to fit your reptile needs as far as housing goes. Thank you so much, Stephen and Ashley. About to put another order because I got a whole new wall that I'm making. Just cannot wait. It's going to be dope. And uh, I just love that my whole room's Focus Cube. I got this whole half of the room all Focus Cubed out now. Now I got to work on that half day by day. 
Stephen Ashley, thank you so much for all that you do. I appreciate you. Um, also, tonight's episode is brought to you by my dog, Gary Shabino, GS Reptiles. Type in GS Reptiles on YouTube. Subscribe to this man's channel and be ready for some amazing content with such a diverse collection of reptiles. All right. So many different species of reptiles you can get your hands on by associates, associates, associates say, oh my God, I, should, I can't even say it by just watching Gary's stuff. Oh my God. You know what, guys? I think I'm ready. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty worked up and I think I'm ready to finally get this episode going. So if you could do me a favor, do what you got to do to get your mind right. Do what you got to do to stay hydrated because I am just ready to go, man. Here we go. Episode 479, Brad and Kevin Boa of Brad Boa Reptiles coming at you right now. Let's go. Good. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only trap talk. Exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, gotta love it, love it, and not them. Hop from the hop to the club spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club spot, get the club to pop. When I come up Get the club to pop when I come up Everybody, we do it Everybody, we do it Episode 479, Brad and Kevin Boa in the building. What is up, fellas? What's going on? What's up, big baby? What's up? How you doing, Brad? Just rocking, buddy. What you got popping? You're three years late, buddy. Hey, man. You know how bad that sounds? <laughs> hey, man. He put his kid in there in the wolf. <laughs> I was laughing after that one. Oh, I, I mean, did, dude. I'll be honest. I did. It, it, that's funny. Yeah, listen, that's what that's what Pop's got to do to his son sometimes. No, and, for sure. He's like, here you go. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Like, <laughs> Stop yeah, it up, <laughs> Cupcake. Let's go. Hey, but respect to Pop's. Hey, you've grown a lot, Kevin. Real shit. Like, I got to say, since meeting you at Tinley and just seeing you just hold it down at the table, man. I I, I see you run you. at Tinley's, and you're doing great, bro. I'm, I'm, well, I gotta, thank you. Thank you. Being someone who's known you for a handful of years already, I got to say, you're killing it, and I'm, I'm happy to be here with you and your Pop's, man. Well, thank you, thank awesome. you. Yeah, that first pod, that first podcast was three years ago. I can't believe that. Over three years I, ago, I thought it was like a year ago, dude. <laughs> How old are you? Oh, a, a, a twenty-eight. 28. Okay, okay, you're yeah. not as young as I thought you were then. But no, no, I, I look younger for sure. You, you definitely do. You look just like your dad. I see your, your oh yeah, your yep. face, everything right there. Like that's. I mean, Brad. Let me ask you. You live through your son, I'm assuming, or your sons. I I should say. I mean, you got you got two sons, right? Two boys, yeah, Alex and Kevin. And I mean, I mean, I could just tell how tight you are with Kevin. Is it the same with the other one, or what? You guys, oh, all sure. dude, oh, it's family above anything, buddy. And, and and how did it all begin, man? You know, I, I you do have some stories that go way back. Um, I I heard true or false. You used to work for Brian Barcheck. Is that true? That would be true. Can you tell me a little bit more about that, dude? I was uh, literally I worked a uh, contractor for a power company, and uh, you know I was cranking working. And I heard some guy was needing some help, some side work. So I, I had a few rainbow boas I was messing with and some other boas. And I didn't even like ball pythons. I thought they sucked. <laughs> All right. So I started calling, going on the weekends and, you know, after work and just going to help him out. Right. And basically I did a few shows. I started selling some stuff. And I was like, man, I can do this. Mm. So, dude, I knuckled up. I saved about 25k and I bought my first uh, first snake uh, investment wise was a pin strike. What year was this? Oh shit, man! Was that oh 
Oh five. No. Was it earlier? It was probably, probably oh two for the. It was right? like literally when for, pins just came out. Pro, probably like, 02, when he first, 03, yeah. when right. Brian left pins, I, I can't remember the year. And and I and I, I know pin was that foundation. That's kind of what threw you up there, mm -hmm. right? With the pinstripe, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, pastels were I don't know, like twenty five, thirty five hundred bucks. You know, so we messed around with those, bred those, and I uh, did the pin, and then. The same year, I think I grabbed the cinnamon. The cinnamons were like ten grand. Wow! You know, but I took that pin the first year and tripled my money. So, what was what's the deal with? Okay, because you you said you kept rainbow boas before the ball, ball pythons, right? Yeah, I hate I hated ball pythons. Thought they so, sucked. so like how like for instance, I'm just I know even back in the '90s, like if you kept anything other than a ball python, you were kind of tapped into the reptile world, like you know, because you didn't see other anything but a ball python at a pet shop, right? So oh, being, yeah. being Michigan, like Michigan, you wouldn't think Michigan would be like a kind of an animal import collect, uh, I mean, like capital of, of the of the country, but it is. There's a lot of important oh, people that come from Michigan. Dude, Mark Mark Bell, right? Yeah. Mark Bell, yeah. Michigan. I mean, basically the OG founder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of our industry. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's insane. So, but 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 the rainbow boas came into your collection. How how did you even get a stumble across getting uh, such a cool species in? Man, it was just uh, uh, my brother. Uh, one you always of his, liked him. Yeah. yeah, I've always liked him as a kid. Don't get me wrong, but right. My brother uh, hung out with a guy that kept some snakes, and then he bred them and brought me over to his place. It was actually Mark Bell's old house. My buddy bought Mark's place. Wow. And dude, I was <laughs> done. Game over. You know, right. like like done. Right. And, and, and go ahead. We just, you know, we didn't have internet. We didn't have stuff. We had. The reptiles, you know, so you start looking at ads and sending pictures, you know, sending, uh, did I ask my wife sending out, hey, get me pictures of this, this, and this, you know? Mm. So that's how we really got tapped in. So, you know, and, and then I'm curious, you know, what were you doing there? Like, what's your profession, uh, Brad, if you don't mind me asking? Like, what do you do for work? I was on the ground splicer. Okay. So, God, I did that for, God, I'm retiring in about six months. Congrats! That's huge. now I'm in the I'm in the office, so it's uh, it's all good. Yeah, I'm, I, I bet you know after all those years, I'm assuming you know it's got to be good where you're at now. Um, but I'm curious, like, what type of person, ha, kind of, what kind of job does a person have to have to have the balls to drop the kind of money you were dropping when ball pythons was really not 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 that it was nothing, oh. but it was a small world back then. Like, you know, you you didn't you can't predict where where, where it led to today. You know what I mean? No, but you could see, right? You could see what's ahead of you. You could see what's going on. Right. You know, like we, we never had anything, man. I'll be honest with you. Like I, I got out of high school and I worked on a garbage truck, you know, from mm -hmm. there I got into the contract with Edison and did that, did that grind. I worked, I probably missed literally seven years of my kids' lives just hustling, just job to job, trying to build that business up, you know, because I wanted something more for my family. I think it was seeing uh, like Brian Breed and, and Ralph Davis Breed look at. Oh yeah, dude. Like, it's, yeah. yeah you, know, you, you see that, right? You, you see other people's success. You see other people yeah. doing success, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do this. And I just got taken over by all the pain jobs, you know, basically, and what you could do with them. Right. So you can see that progression. Right. You know. You know, I, and I think I met, and by the time I met Barcheck, like he was, you know, a whole different stage in his life compared to like how he was raised, you know, raising up in the game, you know, um, what, what was he like back then? Like you meeting Barcheck and then especially working for him 30 years ago, or just shy of 30 years ago. What, what was he like back then? I'm curious. Well, like, you know, like going up, you know, you see like Brian Sharp was, you know, they're, they're like gods to me. You know what I mean? Like right, me, right. me and these guys and seeing the stuff they produce. Right. You know, Brian was Brian, you know, type of deal. Like, you know, I got to see like the first entries and stuff like that, you know, from Noah. I got to see a lot of the, the front stuff. Yeah. You know, so that was kind of kind of crazy. I mean, you know, just I, yeah. Seeing the amount of the animals in one place was overwhelming as a kid, you know? Oh, man. And, and okay, when you say kid, Brad, how old were you? Shit, like 20. Mid 20s, man. 21. Mid yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I was pretty young. I, I had I had kids early in life, you know. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say. Okay. So by then, Kevin was already born. Kevin, are you the oldest? Or were yeah. You? Yep. Yeah, I'm the oldest. What year were you born, Kevin? 
95. 95. What a year, 95. All right. Oh, yeah. so, yep. All right. So at, at what point in time, Brad, did you kind of see the, you know, Kevin getting interest and like thinking, okay, I, I definitely have like a little mini me at this point. I can start grooming him. High so, school, high school for sure. You know, well, ever since they were small, though, they, yeah. they were banging. Like, okay. dude, I had them guys working. <laughs> you know, I wanted them to learn something from it as well. Right. You know, so I had them when they were young, super young. They had their own stuff to take care of. They did their own stuff. Right. You and, know. And Kevin, you you say about high schools when you're looking at it, like, well, hell, maybe I could do this. No, for sure. Yeah, it yeah. changed in high school for sure. Yeah. 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 For, for 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 this one, Alex. Yeah. Alex always loved everything. I mean, if he wasn't getting bit by something, he didn't like it. You know, <laughs> like the the kid was off the chain. Oh yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, that kid was messed up for let's, sure. Let's kind of speed back here a little bit as far as like you investing in the pinstripe. You obviously get success breeding. How did you get? to the point where people wanted to spend a lot of money with you like was it because of the circle you associate associate yourself with or like how are you like making somebody in that presence right because there's no social media then right obviously nowadays you start a social media you don't instagram you do youtube people start following you back then how are you let like how are you in the circle let people know like i'm curious to, to be honest with you, you just kind of jumped on what kind of forums you could like like okay. king snake ball python.net um Sure. Uh, you know, was it uh, what was it? BLBC, Ralph Davis' site. Ralph Davis. Yeah. yeah, you kind of put you you spent your time, you put it out there, but if you had the right stuff, people came to you. I mean, it wasn't you, you didn't have to push it. Were you hitting no. show, were, you, were you hitting shows hard back then, Brad? No, no, no. No, I never. Uh, we did our local show, but uh, no, any RBCs. That's it. I mean, really for us. There's a story I heard about you and a shit ton of bumblebees and killer bees. Oh God! Can you tell me the story behind that? What, what's oh, the, what, God. What, 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 what's going on with that? I want to hear that. So <laughs> I forget what year that was. Dude, we made we made so many bees, so many killer bees. I literally probably had what fifty of them. <laughs> fifty of them all on display at like at one time. It was it was pretty bad, you know. Yeah. But I heard you did good. Like I heard oh, you. Oh, we like, sold. Dude, we yeah. sold them all. We sold wow. them all. We sold them all. We killed. I think Brock was talking crap. <laughs> yeah, Brock was. I think Brock was right talking crap. Um, I, I, oh, for sure. There's, there's literally knock on wood. I thank our industry. It's, it's really allowed our family. You know, but there's really nothing we, we haven't sold. You know what I mean? Like we just been super fortunate. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I, my whole life's changed as I started becoming more vested into reptiles, but really it just shows like, you know, you do things right and good things come your way where you realize how big of a blessing it is to do what we do, like working with animals oh. and, and then meeting just the people I feel like too, like, you know, like, right. like, like I said, like, you know, having to where I met your son over the internet and then I meet him in person and see the growth from there. It's just, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, I love it. It's, it's also inspiring too, because I know there are people doing it the way they should be doing it. Like not everyone's a fucking dipshit in ball pythons. Like there's actually people who are the leading front of the industry, you know, and they're the ones, it's the reason why you've been here for so long. And and I will say that's not easy to do, right, Brad? Like being relevant this long in ball pythons, it's well, not an easy task. I, I mean, honestly, you just, I really think it's just taking care of people and loving what you do and just li literally just customer service and making sure everybody's happy with their experience with you. You, yeah. you know, like just, just being real with people. Yeah. Um, speaking of people, one of the, one of my favorite people that I've gotten to meet, um, well, family, I will say is the straight, straight fire family. Shout out to LeVance, shout out to Wesley. Um, but did you sell LeVance bumblebees or killer bees? Is that, that I, how you guys met or something like that? I think it was that same show. <laughs> I think he was walking around with, uh, Mark, uh, okay. Man Mandic, right? Mark, okay. All right. Yep. And I think uh, he was, I, I think LeVance was just really coming on the scene. Nice. You know, buying some stuff. He bought a killer bee from me. Okay. <laughs> I remember that. All right. But I had, you know, like I had a bunch of them out there. And I think I sold them a, uh, it, was, it was a bigger male. It was a larger male. Okay. Now, you know. since we're on the topic of this, because I, I don't know how many, how many times I've been talking about this on the show, just when it comes up. And you know, this is no you know, not un, unpopular topic, the whole wobble within spider, right? Um, 
because one of the first things that I realized after buying all these killer bees and bumblebees that, which was, I was in love with when I first came into this game, 2016, when I first saw my first killer bee, I was like, what is this? Right. And then eventually as adults, and as I was paying attention, I will say almost all of mine had that crazy, like cork spin. Right. Um, when, when did that something become like, not an issue, but something that everyone was discussing, like, okay, what's up with this wobble? Like, was that something that you found out right away? Did that come later? And what's your thoughts on that old wobble? No, ask, ask Kevin right now how bad ours wobble. Not really. No, yeah, not really. So it, it was coming out, and I'm like, God, ours, they're really not crazy. Like, I've yeah. seen some that were nuts, right? Yeah, I had some nutty ones, for sure. Right. I got, I bought a guy's whole clutch out of damn Blitto. They that worked for Kevin McCurley back in the day. Wow. I don't know if he he might still, um, but I kept that snake. Oh my god, over twenty years. Um, she she passed away finally, but she bred, dude. She gave me, ten, dude, ten eggs every time. Ten to twelve. Yeah, yeah like our biggest was fourteen. I think. Yeah, like solid. So, but, uh, so do you think do you think a lot of it's people overreacting? Um, and just like no. People- I will say, I remember the first couple of years, nobody really cared. No one cared. Nobody cared. No. Like, we were like, oh, they wobble? Like, our stuff really yeah. never wobbled, you know? I would say probably, what, like 2012, 2013, that's when people started caring. Like, people started noticing. Yeah, care, like, oh, you know? yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. want this in my collection. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay. So, but, but obviously, just- obviously, somebody where you're at mentally in the – Ball, ball python game like when you kind of saw that maybe being an issue to a customer or even a breeder did you start pivoting right away from spider or, or what What were you doing with spider at that point i mean as you started to see like the stuff really wobbling and it was getting bad with certain genetics and certain people's stuff um yeah we definitely sidetracked away from it um like i don't even know if we have a spider left in our collection I don't think we do. Yeah, no, no, we don't. No, I don't think we do. We, our last one was a banana spinner. That's one of my like favorite combos ever. Is a, a is just that. It's did sweet. you ever get that thing to breathe? Get, get I, I got one clutch. Out did of you? It. Yeah, I got one clutch. And you know, like I said, like if you aren't involved in knowing what morphs hot, what morph does what, and you just are just an outsider looking in, you you love all that spinner lemon black. That shit looks cool as hell. Like it's oh, don't do it's like a dope snake. But then it's kind of like well, once you start realizing what you hear or also like for my case what i experienced like i I know what i saw and it was like whenever i would shut the lights off i would shut the lights off come back in my room turn the lights on real quick and they're all doing it it was creepy bro it was super creepy um but then also knew i just was something i didn't want to breed and work with uh all right yeah so but you know that's kind of what how it goes in this and 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 i'm you know that being said that's you know this is one gene that is still worked with i will say and could still look possibly awesome like i think i've seen a spider combo somewhere and i'm like you know fuck that's a sick looking snake you know so it's almost you can't you almost can't write off almost any morph if you don't have that experience with wobble then fuck it who gives a shit you know do what you got to do honestly you look anybody someone that doesn't like snakes can look at a bumblebee and like oh wow that's beautiful yeah you know like they're they're gorgeous but no i get it man yeah now let's talk about a real popular you know i, I want to say one of the founders you know uh, another gene that pulled me in uh was the banana the banana morph right um yes banana you were a part of that big first person working with banana and getting it to a crazy point and is that when you and brock became like uh like i guess collaborating partners at some point or like breeding partners uh-huh. or i'm trying, to, I'm trying to, what we did first so I end up I end up buying a banana off rock the following year after he got his. Okay. Um, for stupid money, my wife's like, "You got to do it," and I'm like, "Okay." Nice. So yeah, no, I grabbed one. I think it was like fifty five grand. Um, he taxed he taxed me pretty good. Um, Damn, bro, go easy, guy. <laughs> yeah, he was. I think I remember back like when he produced like a bunch of Lesters, right? I called him up and I'm like, uh, I offered him ten grand for a lesser. Right. And he he basically said, Yeah, go pound sand. He wanted fifteen. Wouldn't do no better. <laughs> so that was my first interaction with uh, Wagner. <laughs> yeah. What the he was, he, was solid, though. he was he was crushing it, man. He sold them all. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have it like that. You have it like that. What are you gonna do? You for know? sure, man. Oh, I get it. You gotta respect it. 
No, for sure. I mean, like, you know, like I, I'm very lenient, I guess I should say, if I, if someone who supports me wants to buy a snake from me and I have it priced a certain way, I'll work that price all day for that person. I don't, I, I care about, if you support me, I'm going to support you. But if we're talking something like down the line, when I produce Condros, don't ask me dick about prices. Don't ask me anything about coming down whatsoever. Even right. if I, like, that's a whole other thing I look at. So that's, back, that's my baby. And I got to tell you, ball pythons, now that they're babies now, uh, not not babies now, but and we're talking something that he knew that he had that nobody else fucking had. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. it's, it's a position on the chessboard that everyone wishes they could, they could be sometimes, you know? Oh, and you have to make those moves, you know, when you see that stuff. Like, uh, God, I think I had 45 grand tied up in a butter. Fuck, dude, this is crazy. A butter. A, a butter. butter. But what? I throttled it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, it's they were great investments, great snakes. I was I was done. Like game over for me. I was I was in. Right. Put me in coach, I was there. You saw it. You saw it and you like visualize. And the thing is, like a lot of people come across ball pythons off a video or something and think they see the visual that they that they need, but no, man, like sometimes you just gotta see it, see it, like the way you're talking about it, man. Um and yeah, you gotta feel it, man. Like, you gotta feel it, you really do. And I think uh Oh man, it's just interesting to hear because I, I I'm curious, you know, when you got your hands on a morph that it's just not out, right? Like like a butter back in the day that you spent that much money on. How did you breed that snake? Was it like putting it to pastels or like did you figure out putting it together made a blue dye Lucy? Like we were like how did how did Dude, you it, it was so early? Literally, we everybody, you know, we had pastel was a big thing in everybody's collection. I think we you had know, what, like 90 normals, I think. Uh, 90 yeah. more, yeah. Oh yeah, we was, had we had more like 300 a, a lot of a lot of normals <laughs> so, but i was picking like weird shit you know like i try to pick out crazy stuff you know right like that extreme gene or extremist or whatever oh you know that was an animal that came in um from africa right i think ian ian got it brian bought a couple hundred two three hundred a lot of them mm. and then i picked three snakes out brian gave it to me for christmas right right so I raised it up, bred it. We were like making, I, I think I put it with that butter. And dude, I made the most stellar looking butters. They were yellow. They were crazy. Looking. They had some stripes on the back too. Yeah, they're all cool. striped out, trippy. And I sold one to Ken. Ken made them. And then he's, Ken started calling them bowline butters. And I'm like, dude, you can't call them bowline butters. So right. then I think he went to extreme and, you know, then started developing that gene. But. Let's go back oh. to that, that. Let's go back to that line talk real, real, real quick. So Ken got these from you and noticed that they were like an enhanced version of what a normal, uh, I guess, butter would look like. Right? Is what you're saying? Yeah, they were they were super trippy, man. Because I couldn't keep them in stock. Right. Like oh, wow. I couldn't keep none of them, man. And they were. You're, you're, and you're selling them where? Since you weren't really doing a lot of shows, where were you selling? Oh, I, dude, like, like uh, people hit me up, or dude, I think I sold like. I three or snake. four males, yeah. king snake, three or four males at Tinley one year. I mean, and for us, that was, you know, big money, you know? Oh, fuck yeah. You're right. I mean, you all know, it takes one snake, you know, in a sense, you know, yeah. to kind of help you with leverage to get to the next point. Um, oh, for sure, dude. It's a stepping stones. Right. Now, now speaking of stepping stones, um, the whole breeding side of things, was that a learning curve at all for you at one point back, back, back in the day, or was it pretty just straightforward even back then? Because there are talks about nine in the nineties, ball pythons were the hardest things to breed and nobody could figure it out. But by the time you came in, that wasn't the case or. You know what, man? I, I literally, I think my first clutch was a, a normal, a normal to like a ghost or something. I, I can't remember. What'd you have? But... Like, what'd you have? You, have, you didn't have rack systems back then. Did you? Oh, yeah, dude. I had some, like, dude, 1970s shit that it was nuts. <laughs> no it way. was bad. The warped wood. Yeah. Oh, warped wood. It was 28 <laughs> cords, and I had a crap load of colubrids and uh, a shitload of boas that I am the worst boa breeder. Suck. <laughs> like, boa is a hindrance for me breeding, trust me. And it's funny because your name, you know, it's kind of like... Oh, it sucks, dude. I, I suck at breeding boas. I think I even I remember asking Kevin when he was on. So your last name really Boa? Like that's your last name? He's like, yeah, that's my last name. I'm like, wow. Like, you know, you automatically think I oh, was a Boa guy. Like this guy probably is like, dude, you're such a tool. You changed your name. <laughs> so many people think that too. It's funny. I mean, come on. There are some hardcore like reptile lovers oh, out no, there that would, sure. would do some for weird sure. shit like that. You know what I mean? 
I oh, see yeah. people. Not, you know, not that you know, I, I'm a US, US art supporter all day, every day, but you can see me tattoo that shit on me. I'll tell you that much. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, you know, right? God bless, you know. Uh, but, anyways, um, now, you know, at what point, you know, because here's the thing, Brad, you know, one of the biggest topics, you know, 2024, what a bunch of fucking soft people we have right now in this world. But I got to tell you, oh. there, there, there are some people out there that are just complaining about the market and, oh my God, the price is right. How many times have you seen any kind of drops or any kind of dips or anything in the ball python market since you've been in it? Bro, like the, all the way through. I mean, all, right from the word go. I mean, the markets are going to move, change, and come back. I've seen them flip and come back and kill it. And it's happened, what, twice? Oh, for sure. Yeah, 2008 and probably 2014 or something. Well, yeah. just even look at stuff Justin's doing now, right? right. Justin's bringing back a bunch of old jeans, mm. and my God, he's killing it. He's making some killer stuff. Right. The guy's a madman. Right. You know, so it just goes to show you, man. It's you, you just need to work with what you have, you know, develop it. You know, just dude, have fun. Enjoy yourself. And you know, one of the things I I feel like you guys are doing for sure, minus all the shit talkers out there. I'm not one of them, but you know, you working with Sunset, right? Like what a what a like there's still so much to come from that. And I know you guys working with that. Kind of, it's showing there. It's a huge foundation, Gene. Right? Like that's. Oh my god! I want to know what you guys feel about foundation. If you guys are even listening to any of the noise out there, I'm not foundation. What you guys feel about sunset? What do you guys? What kind of the? What do you guys think about the noise out there about sunset just being a brown fucking snake and it looks like shit when it's an adult? Not that I ever, I never said that. I'll say that much. Um, but I'm just saying, what, what, what's your? What do you guys do with feedback like that? And how do you guys feel about the sunset project as a whole? And you guys being some of the front leading people on that project. Man, usually when you hear some bullshit, we'll go put a picture out. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's all you got to say, honestly. I mean, <laughs> you know, true. that's all you got to. You got to let your your stuff speak for itself. I you know, know, like we we harnessed that that baby. You know what I mean? We took care of that project. You know, yeah. honestly, all the people who talk shit, they, they, they always want it anyway. They all want yeah. it anyways. They get one of these. They yeah. get it down the line. It always happens. There's, for sure. That that project's so on tap. There's so much stuff to do. And it's hilarious. Now, you know, I, 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 go ahead, finish. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, I'm just jacked. I'm still jacked over that project. I mean, just even seeing what Brock just popped that puzzle out, right? You can yeah. see That's puzzle, crazy. whatever, puzzles the new clown, blah, 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 whatever. Um, it's 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 badass. I'm so pumped for the future with this stuff. Now, I, it was crazy. It's like whenever I see a new sunset, it usually comes from you guys. Like, I'm like, holy shit, what the hell? Um, and I'm curious. Like, where do you guys feel the most comfortable as far as like, okay, this is going to be the sunset that fucking blows up. And what I mean by that, like, what recessive you guys think it's going to be? Because um, I, cause, cause I I'm, think I'm, 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 like, puzzle Kevin, for sure. Can I want to be honest with you, Kevin and yeah. Brad? I don't, I don't like it in Pied. It's, it kind of makes me like, like, why, like, why does it look so similar to other stuff when there's a sunset clown in that Pied? Why doesn't it look like there's a sunset clown in that Pied? That's I, my, I, I think we got to layer it, right? I think, I think it needs another gene. I think we need to put more stuff into it to see, oh, boom. You know, it, it's, it's got to change it up for sure. It, yeah. It's going to be a layer. Right. You're gonna, you have to add Leopard and NT, I think, for sure, you to, know, to bring out more pattern. That, that pattern, that dark stuff is bringing out the, the pattern back. Like, a lot of these animals, like, you know, even the lavender or whatever, um, I, I think you need uh, Leopard in there, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think you need that stuff to, to darken it up a bit. I think what you need is all your options on the fucking table. And, and I think that's what you guys are doing because for me, I'm scared of pie. Like I work pie because I, you know, you got to work pie. People love pie. Right. But there are some things that are just so hard to ID in pie, like to the point where oh, for sure, and just keep it. You're on, you're better off just keeping it because that average person is not going to pay you money for a high white pie like that. Right. Um, but you know, you also hit ones that there's no question behind it. It's like, Holy shit. Look at that thing. You know what I mean? No, no, no. hundred percent. Like, like, what's the white lace pie going to look like? I mean... White lace sunset. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's... That, that lace gene is killer to me. That's awesome. I love lace. Yeah. I love lace, dude. I, and and how, much, how much lace is in your guys' collection? I'm curious. Bro, I would not let him sell a single female. <laughs> Dang. That's all, that's okay. all I'm going to say. I need you guys to clear something right now because there are a little bit of talk out there. Well, lately, two genes that, that made me like, whoa, what? Because I've heard these aren't quote-unquote strong genetic genes to raise up one of them's confusion and then the other one was lace 
Um, I only have one lace female that I'm raising up, and she's she's okay. I mean, she's still young, but what's your guys' take on lace not being a strong gene? And that's maybe my some... first time hearing that. So, it's only my first time here. So literally, Correct. I got yeah. these things in uh, what are they? Ten seventy fives ARS tubs. Yeah, dude, these things will jump out of the tub and kill you. Okay, dude, my, my mind's vicious, bro. Holy They're gangster. Like you can't yeah. feed these things enough. I think I just posted a lace today, actually, an okay. NC lace orange green cloud. We don't. I mean, we got twenty, thirty of them. Okay. Wow. Um, just, just raising up. So right. definitely one of my favorite jeans. Like I would not let him sell a single one. And obviously, there are just certain incomplete dominants that need to be in super form, like gravel, asphalt. Right? Is that how you guys feel? Obviously, about lace, it needs to be white lace form at some point when in, in everything for you guys. Well, oh, you want to see it, right? oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you have yeah, to. You want to see the white, right? Um, but just seeing the lace mixed in with stuff is like, oh wow! Yeah. You can just see the future, like definitely killer. That lace sunset that was sweet. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, did you post it? You said you said you post. Or did you wait? You made a lace sunset, or who made one? I, I who uh, was that? Uh, again, not my lace mind. sunset. No, uh, well, I think they, they just made a red stripe. Who just made a lace? I, yeah, Leviathan just made a red stripe, I think. Red stripe, yellow belly. You know, they're bringing up some stuff. You, you yeah, need I to have those guys on. <laughs> oh, oh they, they said Miguel made it. Always oh, evolving. Oh, Miguel. Oh, yeah, that's who it was. That's yeah, it. Miguel's yeah. crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, it was sweet, actually. Yeah. Now, you know, man, I, I want to say it's overwhelming, but it's also fun. Like, the amount of stuff that you can get your hands on that – just takes everything about breeding ball python to that next level um but like man how long have you known about lace because i just heard about it two years ago um but like has lace been around for a minute brad from what you know and like uh so dude actually my buddy Bolito had it over on east side man for years like but they just never really it never went anywhere you know and then you see some stuff justin put out it's like oh wow you know it just you know having that to see the future of that you know to see it ahead you know that's where you got to be you know yeah yeah you know, because also white lace came like after the huge dg craze like everyone's jumping oh. on the DG fucking train and everyone thinking all they need is to be successful about pythons is dg and then all of a sudden there's a white lace Dude. And, and that makes dg look like fucking like child's play it's like crazy. a bitch yeah yes yes bro that blew my mind when i seen an adult dg um, then adult G, you know, the white lace clown. Yeah. Dude, I'm like, why would you get the DG then? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, it, amazing. And we're basing, all, we're, basing, we're basing all this off age. Like, the, we're talking snakes that look great as, a as an adult. At four yeah. years old. Yeah. As an adult, most definitely. Yeah. What yeah. looks better? It gets better as it ages, right? Yeah. And, you know, to go back to sunset, here's the thing. Like, I, I, I want to be 100% honest because I'm being, I'm kind of trolling you. I am definitely one of those people who think like a single sunset looks like shit. But when you put something that makes something else look that much better and it ages better, that's when everything changes. And so that's why I already know there's going to be a point in time where you can't say shit about Sunset because look at look what we're looking at. We're just, you know, this, we're just not there yet, I don't think. So if you, if you really dial this back, okay, dial this back to the first Sunset that came in, right? right? Dude, it, it wasn't all that. It, it wasn't? Was it, it, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that cool. Um, the first one, the first ones the that wild, came in, the wild right? One, yeah. Uh, now, what, they, what do you say? Not cool, just not like the the contrast. Dude, it was, there, it was dark. Out. It wasn't. It wasn't a good looking animal. Okay. It, it really wasn't. Um, it, it, it got bred and it got bred. You start breeding at the better stuff, dude. We yeah. got some adults that are cherry, man. That are crazy looking. Just single gene female sunsets, like yeah. two thousand plus gram animals that are like, oh wow, that's pretty badass. Right. You know. But a, a lot of the original stuff, man, was just, you know, it's uh, just out of the wild. And I think, you know, people just had, uh, okay, whatever, they're breeding just some ugly looking normals. We tried to really keep a wild type stock that everything was just killer looking, right? It was all stupid stuff. So yeah. I, I think the genetics wise back then, you know, we just had nice stuff. So you make a nice looking animals. Who started making sunsets to get them like noticeable because again sunsets also something i didn't know about for the first couple of years of being in the ball python game and all of a sudden it's like a sunset 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 and it it so, just started trending 
one of Brian's workers. So Brian, Brian had it, bred it, didn't turn out. It didn't, it wasn't codom. So he left it on the shelf. One of Brian's workers actually seen, seen the animals, seen the like sunset siblings, bred those back and actually produced, uh, what was it two males? Was it two sunsets? I think it was a pair. I can't Maybe a pair. Um, and I think Brian bred them. And then I don't know if he, if that's a clutch we got. Or we got like the third generation, maybe. I can't it was remember. second or third. Yeah. I literally went to his house and took it out of his incubator. Wow. And and even the third generation were still kind of iffy, or were they starting to look better? I, I think I think better. Yeah, sure. they were looking better for sure. I mean, way different than you know the wild stock for sure. You know what I mean? But you broke up a little, bud. Can you hear me now? I got you now. Uh, yep, that's better. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm saying, what year was that when you were, you know, dipping into the incubator and actually handpicking your own sunsets? Oh, God. Four, 13, 13 or 14. 13 or 14. I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> me and Brock got that together. Okay, so 13 yeah, or 14. We, and, and then you started breeding them a, a couple years after that? No. Oh, right away. Dude, I got that thing. So I took it home because I live, like, literally five minutes from Brian's house. Okay. It, it literally had goo on it, dude. We sexed it like out of the egg. <laughs> and uh, I took it out of the incubator, took it home. Dude, I got that sucker to breed the same year. I think we bred it to like a cinnamon pinstripe or something. Kept the babies back. Got those up to size. And then what did we end up getting? Like it was three. I think we made three cinnies. Three. Or, I can't remember. One normal and I think two cinnies. They were all males. Okay. Oh, so wow. it was like, no way. Huh. So it was stupid, you know. So it was a great, great investment. We sold just a handful of um, of double hats, you know. And Brock, I think, wanted to kill me. Yeah, I was, because... I was gonna, I was gonna say, like, I mean, back then, not that that wasn't too, too long ago, but I mean, shit, back then, like, you wanted to be careful who these kind of. Land in the sense, like not you know, I, even nowadays, I mean, like I appreciate everyone who inquires, but not everyone I feel like needs these animals, you know. So, uh, how, how did you do? How did you go about that? And I want to know what Brock's response was after that. I'm curious. So he would call me up, be like, "Hey, Brad, I got a guy that's he's probably gonna kill me for this right now." But he'd be like, "Hey, I got a guy that's offering us twenty grand, right?" And I wanted twenty five, and I'm like, "Nope, not for sale, dude." I think he would literally have like a stroke inside. You know, like I caused that guy a lot of grief, I think. All, all because you wouldn't budge on the 5K. Dude, I, I wouldn't, dude. I was like, I, I, you know, it was like our baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he has to understand that. He didn't budge on your fucking when you, you know, like you paid fucking that price back in the day, it's, right? So you know, but it's, and at the same point, looking back, it's hard when someone's offering you that kind of money for an animal. That's fucking crazy money, bro. I mean, even today, it's, even it's, today. Dude, I was a ditch digger, okay? Yeah. I mean, dude, I didn't make shit for the week. You know what I mean? But I, I think I just too much passion, too much into this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I was a freak. And, uh, you know, I was, I was like, no. But we, we only sold a few pairs and I was happy. You know, I didn't want to, you know, that's why it stayed, you know, that kind of those numbers for years. Yeah. Just, you, just let those go to any like big breeders who are still, you know, hanging in there relevant to today. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. For, for for sure. You know, like those guys. You know, it's but it's someone that's gonna pay that kind of money is gonna respect the project as well. You know. Yeah. Um. For for the most part, so it it, it was good. Definitely I've, one of my favorite projects. I think you probably have a good answer for this question, even though it might be a little bit fucking you know poking the fire here a little bit, buddy. Oh, poke the fire, buddy. Um. You know information holding um, must have been something crazy back then only because you know you find something out you find something that works like you said some of this shit's your baby right um i know how i am with stuff that I, I information that i cherish i'm very careful who i fucking tell right um and i can only imagine how it was back then like how you politicked on who knew what all right and i'm curious how things worked back then like you know like not i'm just saying like when you shared information with somebody how careful were you back then about doing it or, or were you like happy to help anyone out and like, Oh, you need to learn how to breathe. Let me help you how to breathe type of shit. You know, honestly, I'm, 
I'm pretty much a family guy, right? Right. Respect. I see that. You know, for real. So, yeah, if someone came to me, whatever, if I can help you out, I'm going to help you out in that department. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. But as, as far as like holding back, like, I'm not going to tell you how I made this gene or what's in this snake. I don't think we've ever done that. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't, think, I don't think we have. have. Like, that's not our scoop. Has it happened to you? Like, did you feel like that was happening to you at some point? Oh, a lot of the bigger breeders did it. Right. Like, hey, they'll make something and they don't want to tell you how they made it. You know, I, I get it and you got to respect what they want to do, right? I, I just don't think we've ever done that. Yeah, you know, because you, you got some people who invest in certain projects and then get really upset about how someone else prices it, obviously, right? But oh, we're yeah. talking about something where it's kind of out of your control, especially nowadays. Like if someone gets their hands on a certain project and they breed it, they could do whatever the fuck they want with that, right? But 1,000, dude. Right. 1, yeah. You and, do and get I, emotional. Right. You know, like myself included, I, I get like extremely emotional about stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's their animal. They bought it. They could market and price it and do whatever they want for it. They're going to have X amount of animals and they're going to sell. Yeah. And you'll keep your numbers what you want and then you're going to sell yours. It is what it is. You know, because the biggest thing lately is like, you know, people preferring one more for the other or team this, team that, right? Which yeah, yeah, yeah. I think is fucking kind of pointless because it's its own gene. It's it's like you have so many different roads and direction to take one morph. Why? Who gives a fuck what the other morph is doing, right? Like, I don't get it. Fucking but, enjoy yourself, dude. Yeah. But I also think what, what makes me think why, why would someone be so tied up emotionally with this is because of money. That's it. The it's, only reason why is because money. it's it money, is. dude. It and, is. And, 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 you know, maybe it's some people are a little bit, they're like way ahead of themselves. Maybe they're like de depending on a certain morph to get them to the fucking top, which is stupid to do, by the way, you should never do that. Um, I feel like it, it, it all needs to be in your favor. Like you just gotta let the stars align for you in this shit. Uh, you can't really just put your back car. I'm sorry. Put all your eggs in either one basket or one morph and just say team this fuck everything else. That just, that's just not how you do things in this. I'm sorry. No, I mean, uh, looking into it right now. I mean, obviously, we're in a good spot in life right now. Um, we right. banged it out hard when I was a kid, right? I, I did whatever I could do to make it happen. And, you know, I never quit. I stayed doing what I was doing. And now I can just literally enjoy. Like, I turn a lot of this over to Kevin. You know. I can see that. Yeah. Like, you know, that's design. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let, let him run it. You know, so he, he makes a lot of decisions. I love what I'm doing. I get to play with this stuff. I'm just jacked, you know? Yeah, and, uh, and Kevin, when did you kind of start feeling kind of like, you know, ready to take on that role? Like, you know, do you know how long ago it was when, you know, you were willing to be like, well, all right, I'll be the, I'll be the face of the brand and, and, and start pushing everything out. Like when, when was that? Uh, um, you know, I think high school, it kind of started, but I would say over like the last, Five to six years is kind of what, when I took over, like like the public part of it. Right. So, but yeah, I would say like the, the last five or six years for sure. Like, big and, time. and do you do the same thing your dad does? What do you do? Oh for yeah, work? yep, yep. Okay. So also, nine, you know, you also you grind a day job, then you come home and oh, handle. Oh, for it. sure. How the dude? I know you're young, but how the fuck do you do that, bro? Like that's a lot. Like, hey, that's, dude, it's a lot. We, we we all work together. Everybody if not, does if not, dude, it would crumble for sure. You all have if, to work together. So, give me, give me night. Oh, go ahead, Brad. So we've had the last five years for our family has been pretty rough as far as like, you know, my parents got sick. We just, sorry. No, no, no. It's just life. Right? right. You know, like, you know, the cancer and everything. My mom just passed away in January. My dad uh, a couple years ago. So it's been a lot. We had to build a house. So literally I was, I really stopped doing the show was just taking care of my family. And then trying to build a house and get the place set up. So Kevin and his brother really took over a huge role in that department. So I'm truly blessed to have that, you know. And everything we've done, we've really tried to include the kids. It, it's really a family deal. Everybody does something. I mean, I, and I think that kind of makes a lot of sense of why you guys are running the way you are. I mean, you guys are all kind of doing it together. You know what I mean? Um and especially because it's one thing when this is all you do, right? It should be at this level. This is your fault, but it's not like this is in a sense a side thing that you guys are doing. Uh, but it's a, it, but it's not though. I also because you've been doing this for so long, Brad and Kevin. Um, so, but 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 I'm curious because Kevin, you are still young, right? Um, oh yeah. Your, your dad 
is just now about to retire. Are you looking to stretch your nine to five as long as your pops has and and and, and do oh, that? For sure. Yeah, Heck 100%. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> and Brad, you, Brad, you won't let him do reptiles full time? Hell no. Yeah, no, hell no. <laughs> hey, hey, give me a reason I'll, behind that, Brad. I got to hear your reason behind that first. You know, I want people to hear this. Because I'm raising a fucking warrior. Oh, <laughs> okay? A warrior. He's only working eight, ten hours a day at his job. That's nothing. Yeah. You know, get to getting. <laughs> Handle your business. Get to getting. Dude, but we're talking about, like, what, what are we talking? What if we're talking about snakes just racking 50, 60K sales again? And you're, you're, you're just making that kind of money. Is it still now you're not, you're not hanging your cape yet? You're still fucking grinding it out? Like, cool story. I want that pension, dude. You know, that's, that's don't, cool. don't live your life on that. Dude, that's so smart. You got to do your dad definitely grooming you the right way, Kevin. I'll no, you for sure. Way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, this kid gets up in the morning and works. Yeah. You know? He was cleaning cages. As, 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 dude, he's probably four years old cleaning cages. You know. Now, now who, who's doing, like, you know, obviously there's, I don't want to say it's grunt work, right? Because it's really not backbreaking, but holy, holy shit, after a while, you know, spot cleaning or substrate changing, you know, that when you have that many snakes, it definitely becomes a chore and a half, right? So is, is this, are we talking positions that everybody does everything they, all around, or are there certain people designed to do certain things? No, I, I, we both do it. Yeah, we we, we all we it. all just do it. So we moved we moved about an hour away from uh, where we lived before. My youngest son bought our old house, so I miss him. You know what I mean? Because he would come over and bang out stuff with us as well. So now it's just harder for him to come in. Um, he he really got into the breeding, and we all sit down together and you know make plans for that. But the labor. Me and him pretty much rock everything out right now. And give, give us give give us a weekly schedule. Like what's like for instance, like what's a what's a Monday like? What's a Tuesday like? Like let's every cage, every cage. What do you mean? Every you're you're gonna open every cage every day. Uh, every day, every cage is open. Every day, you're gonna spot clean every day for sure. Like Thursdays that. we pull waters. Uh, Fridays we put males away and feed and, and breed. You know, feed rather. And then Sunday, Sunday and Tuesday, we flip males. Okay. And, and are you guys seasonal? Like, meaning, is there a time and place where you, you know, no matter where, what's happening, you pull that male because you're, you know, the female doesn't go or, or do you keep pairing all year round? What's, what's your guys' take? No, we, I mean, we pretty much, what pretty, we, about August, sometimes July, August, depends what the male is. Like this year, a lot of our older stuff is going later. Our right. younger stuff we raised up is is killing it, right? They'll right. go early for sure. So we're because we moved everything, you know. Um, we're having a little bit later year for us, right? But dude, this this shit's off the chain. Like they're feeding, we can't give them enough rats. It's nuts. And you guys produce your own rats, or you guys no. got fire? We, we buy. We buy them. Yeah. Ooh, and we're talking like something consistent, huh? You guys, you guys like your suppliers on point, or do yeah, you guys, oh for sure. Dude, I've yeah. been buying rats off him probably twenty five years. And we have what you think like six hundred snakes? Yeah, good so roughly, six, yeah, good six hundred or so. I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, you guys, have you ever bred? You have you ever bred your own rats at one point or no? Okay, so I kept so much shit over this because <laughs> these rats were like the size of chihuahuas. They were huge. Wow, dude, I was giving them chocolate bars, and then I found out chocolate was not good for them. <laughs> they were like my pets, man. Chocolate <laughs> Oh. Yeah, dude, I was buying cereal for them, and you know, not good. Yeah, yeah sure. I was the shittiest rap producer too, dude. I gotta you know. tell you, I gotta tell you, man. Like, I, it was, I was so, I was definitely ahead of myself, but I didn't care because how much I love the reptiles, right? But then, as soon as I, as soon as I got the confidence of breeding my own rodents, I realized, holy shit, this sucks, you know, because it's a lot of work. It's a lot yeah. of work. It's a lot of work, and me, like, I happen to learn off my mistakes, and there's just not a lot of mistakes you can make fucking breeding rats as far as like chew outs and people things getting loose and mind you i bred rats in the same room as my fucking snakes which was probably the stupidest thing you oh, could ever shit. yeah so but the day i gave up like once i found a really good local supplier and who's yeah. still still fucking here to this day shout out to kenny uh shout out to uh, supreme exotic feeders but anyways as soon as i found them i was like i'm ditching this fucking rodent shit and that was the best day of my life when i when i ended up giving my rat rat my rat racks away I was so fucking happy, bro, because I bet. how much of a chore that was. But at the end of the day, I did it because I, I had no supplier. 
And that's what people don't understand. They could come into this shit, dump a bunch of money, and get to the point where, well, dude, now you don't have a rodent supplier for whatever reason. Now what are you going to fucking do? And that could determine your success on everything in this, bro. Oh, yeah, you're screwed without a supplier. Yeah, if you don't have rats, you're screwed. I'm for telling sure. you, man. You got to feed the breed, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you definitely got to pound them, dude. They, they're going to eat. They're going to tell you when they're done, too, though, you know? Right, of course, you know, and, and and I'm curious, like, were you always someone who um were able to pick up on signs right away, or did you ever, like, invest in an ultrasound early, or, like, I'm just curious, like, how you uh, got comfortable, like, looking at a snake and seeing ovulations approaching and all that kind of stuff? Dude, back in the day, I could palpate, like, the best of them, right? Like, I was pretty good. I got, I got an ultrasound, and then I couldn't palpate for shit. So, wow. <laughs> that's, uh... <sighs> I think like the the original ultrasounds are around ten or twelve grand, right? And then a year later, they were like five for the for the same. Now they're like twenty five hundred. I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. You're getting way more, you way get, more affordable you get, now. You can go on Amazon for a thousand bucks now. You know what I mean? Oh like, no way! That's what I'm yeah. saying. They're they're definitely uh, for us. Yeah, it's a, it's a must. Right, and and you know, and I hear ultrasounds could be very beneficial for like, you know, especially a male that you're trying to make sure you, you do right by, you're not Correct. overworking them. Um, I got to ask you, man, like how young are you getting your males to the point where you feel comfortable breeding them? So back, like back in the day, shit, they were like, what, five, six months, dude. Oh, like, that's nuts. Okay. Tell me, I can hear you. I need, I'm going to get more coffee, but tell me <laughs> how I need to know how. Can you still hear? Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, I literally fed those things, dude, like probably four times a week. Those males, I just got them big. And I was really good with getting a young male to go early. Today, yeah, I don't, I feed once a week. And um, we're, we're pretty good with getting a, you know, a yearly male to breed. Okay. For sure. But back in the day, we like, got lucky a couple times. Yeah, yeah. pinstripe wise, champagne, uh, cinnamon, even. Yeah, dude, I had those things cranking. Damn, man, and, and you know, obviously, you know, this is not the first time I'm hearing about multiple meals within a week. Um, but like, were you a mice guy or rat guy? Like, wh where do you feel like it was more beneficial to get this snake? Depends. Oh. Just depends what that animal is rocking. You know, like I like getting stuff on rats myself. You know what I mean? I do really well. You don't worry about the animals getting bit. It's, you know, I'd rather, I feed small meals. I don't even feed medium rats to my big stuff. I feed all small rats. Yeah, I will say that's, dude, I, I think it's my I, first year of seeing how, what these little fucking hoppers with teeth can do to your snake. Those little fuckers could put little marks on them, man. It sucks. Yeah. I, dude, I think we got like, I don't know, like 150 babies right now, dude, all on rat chunks. So you're you're you guys get them on rats as soon as possible. I like to myself. I know some guys love feeding mice, and you know they 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 feel like they do better. They're getting more calcium and bone. They're doing better. But I just I love rats myself. Do you have any? Do you have any? You know hatchings where you feel comfortable just giving them a rat pup straight from the get go, or like a rat? Oh, I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, if they're trying to kill you, I'll try to give them a rat pup and see what happens. <laughs> you know, for uh, sure. And, and, and at this point, what do you use for, like, substrate for your hatchlings? Like, what has worked best for you guys? I'm paper towel on, on yes. all my babies. I agree. That's a good good. good you know, I'm kind of a beast with, with paper towel. Up yeah. until, you know, they were getting, you know, two, 300 grams or whatever. Right. And then, we, you know, they talked me into this cocoa. Which the Reptichip, yeah. The Reptichip, the best stuff I've ever gotten. Like, I've, had, I've tried every bedding. I've tried it all. And I don't like change. Have you Where's tried? Oh, yeah. Hey, wait, hold. I gotta say, man, my sponsor. Have you tried the cocoa dude yet? Have you? I don't think we no, have. Yeah, no, we've not. I, I have not. I'm not trying to step in any toes, but I'm gonna get some <laughs> pets to you. Okay. I want you just to sample. Just sample it out for me. We'll talk then. Okay. All right. I stand, yeah, I'm, I, I, what I use this shit is pre primo. This shit's bomb, Brad. And I, 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 I wouldn't steer you wrong. But I also heard shout to uh, you know uh, what is it? Rep the chip. Shout to, you know, they're they're super rep reputable too. But I'm standing tall on cocoa dude. And I'm gonna hook you up, and I want to hear your feedback on it. All right. All right, I'll try it. But but, but real, dude, real talk on substrate though. Do you get tired of the dust? Like, do you ever get tired of uh, the accumulation of dust? So we don't have it with this. Okay. Like I don't get so like all the aspens and Nepco and all that kind of stuff we've used in the past, dude. Dust. Like, and my wife's a freak. 
Like she's everything has to be clean, clean, freak. Oh, yeah. clean, 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 clean. <laughs> like she's right. off the chain, dude. She tripped you out. <laughs> um, no, for real. But this stuff, no, no dust. Now it, I, I got to ask you another thing. One thing that has always stood out to me is, um, you know, like depending where you live, humidity could be a motherfucker, right? Um, and I and I. I don't have time for stuck sheds and I have the OCD where if I see a stuck shed, I have to get that fucking thing off. Um, yes. You guys in Michigan have good humidity in like during most of the times of the year. Remind me what kind of humidity you guys battle again. I mean, ours, our room now, our old room, definitely the humidifier ran like hard state sucks. Oh yeah. It, well, what, yeah I'm what, what, what kind of humidifier were you running? I'm curious. I'm trying to think of the name of it, man. It was like a big one, like something to do, like a big room, or was it one oh, yeah. on the wall? Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, not yeah, on the yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got two. Oh, the Trion, I think. Yeah, tr yeah, Trion. Trion, Trion? Yeah. I got two in our room now. I haven't even turned them on yet. Okay. Like, it's the room's pretty much dialed in. It's running pretty good, man. We got lucky. Like, knock on wood. Everything's smooth. Has it been a year yet? I remember how, how long ago was it when you moved in? I think we've been in this house now about five, six months. This this was like a two year project. Wow. Okay. Insane, dude. And how far are you from the uh, the old house? An hour. An hour. An hour. Shit. Uh, so, I mean, hour. That's not the longest drive, but that's still hours of stressful fucking oh, road trip. Much dude, on. this in this property we bought back in oh my god, 2014, 2015. Wow. It was 100% woods. It's up a hill. We had an old backhoe and a chainsaw. We would come out on the weekends and cut trees and get the plot, get the site ready. It, it was insane, dude. Well, you guys are kind of in the cuts now, is what you're saying. Pardon? You're like in the cuts. Like you're kind of like. Oh, you know, okay. oh, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're like up on the hill, dude. I don't even like coming off the hill, to be honest <laughs> with you. You know. <laughs> I just like chilling at home now, man. I'm an old man. I feel you, man. I'm, I'm not even. I mean, I feel. I don't want to say I feel old, only because like I don't. Know, I'm, I'm I'm approaching forty, man, and it's it's scary. Yeah. I, I wish I remember being Kevin's age. You know, not, not you know, not that, yeah. that much younger, but still, I wish I, I would kill to be in my twenties again. Um, but, right? but but in this position though, that's it. I wouldn't want to be in my twenties when I was I was a bad person back then. But I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but so but you you don't, you don't have a lot of neighbors, huh? Like you you're like you're pretty secluded. Yeah, I mean, we got a couple, but like we got thirty acres where we're at right now. So, thirty acres? Yeah. yeah. Fuck that's yep. dream, bro. Oh my god, you get deer on your property and all sorts of stuff or what? Oh yeah, turkey, deer. It's trippy, dude. Dude, we're, I, I love that one, man. Property backs up to a uh, hunt club where they do, you know, they pheasant hunt. You know? Wow. It's uh, it's pretty kick ass, dude. Okay, ever since I went to Michigan to visit Bar Check. I think it was September, October, but that's like the best time of year. I feel like to visit Michigan because it's oh, like it's beautiful, so yeah. beautiful. Like in fall time and, for sure. And like I, I have family in PA in Pennsylvania, and I just I like that vibe. Like just like kind of like that East Coast vibe that 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 they kind of give you. And I got that feeling from Michigan too. Like I just I just like that feeling. And so I, not that I would ever leave Cali, even though it might be smart. Um, but I could, <laughs> maybe live in Michigan someday and just on a bunch of acre and fucking just kicking it and just not, not talk to people that'd be great it's good right but you got your own slice there right didn't you yeah, have yeah, those yeah. uh you have chickens and all that stuff didn't you no i think oh dude i did yeah man i had i had alpacas I had, I had like i don't know how many chickens at one point but that was a uh, property i was i didn't own that place uh me and my wife oh, okay me and my wife rented it was kind of unique we rented a house that had a backyard that had a backyard behind the backyard and it was a whole acre and uh, at that time, it was just an empty lot, and she's like, "Yeah, I can do whatever you want with this." And I'm like, "Can I get alpacas?" She's like, oh. "She's like, right. that's cool, yeah." Yeah, she's like, "Sure, go ahead." And like, next thing you know, four years passed, and she's like, "By the way, um, I'm building a house here now. You got to get all this shit out of here." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> no. like, she's like, "Yeah, by the way, you guys got to leave too." And I'm like, "Holy shit!" And then uh, nice. that's, but you know, it, it worked out because we we need, you know, I, I don't recommend anyone having all these animals in your renting. Like, I don't think that's a smart thing to do. I think if you are gonna have this much liability it should be under your name not someone else's you know yeah, yeah, um, yeah so anyways it was a smart thing to do and it was it was scary because buying a house that was right during covid i think right after covid so everything was all fucked up and jacked up price wise and like everything was, yeah. everyone, was everyone was the problem was brad was everyone was buying houses with cash 
Like for whatever reason, yep. motherfuckers had cash and they were just buying these houses with cash. We kept getting outbid and out like our offers weren't going through. And then like 30 grand over asking. Yeah, it was terrible. Oh, for real. Oh, dude, I'm talking thir- easily 30K over asking. Oh, we for just, sure. We didn't have that. We're just like, what the fuck do we do? And but it, it luckily it worked out in the end. And, and so now we're we're chilling. I don't have an acre, but I have a backyard, so that's cool. <laughs> So do you still have chickens in that or no nah, no nah, I just got my pit bulls and I got you know okay all my fucking I did dude one thing oh my god don't recommend doing this without research but I got salcata tortoises when I first moved in here like they were like a good friend of mine I used to DJ with hit me up she's like she's like yeah I don't I got these adults are 16 years old and I thought it was the coolest idea to do dude they started building tunnels under my house and I was oh like my god. Oh, shit. <laughs> So I had to get, wow. dude, my, and, and luckily I was able to cover one up before my wife saw it, but I had to get them the fuck out of here. Right. I, I tried to do that farm life here. No, nah, it's not going to work, bro. I'm, I'm going to, going to just hold off. I'm going to wait. <laughs> nice. That's crazy, man. My, my yeah. wife actually wanted a fucking donkey. So, <laughs> and they're cool, but a donkey's going to learn, lead into alpacas. It's going to get this. You're going to get that. Well, but 300 okay, chickens. okay, alpacas. Like the one thing I love about the alpacas, every year we would get them, we would shave them, and we would turn their wool into blankets, and like it was really awesome. What the fuck does a donkey do? Like, what's the purpose of a donkey? Bro, they're, they're cute. Okay, they're cute. <laughs> if she's gonna hear this shit and be like, "Oh yeah, we're putting up a uh, barn." I'm like, "No, babe." <laughs> Yeah, she's gonna want alpacas after this. So. A farm, a farm life is a dirty life, though. I will say there were times where I was like, I didn't, I didn't want to go back there because I knew it was rainy, muddy, and like the chickens too. Birds are dirty, okay? Bro. Chickens are fucking dirty, disgusting, actually, to be honest. Um, and so, mind you, like once once that life was over for the time being, I'm, I was kind of happy, and I had to go back there as much as I used to, to be honest, because you know I got other stuff to focus on. <laughs> Hold my beer. You never seen this kid's room back in the day. Oh, come on, bro. What? What'd you have? Nothing. Just this room. Just oh, this oh, room. oh, just this room. <laughs> you started oh, feeding into the wolves again, Kevin. Oh, my oh, God. Again, yeah, like always. Yeah. Shit. Right. Ain't sit next to Kevin. Hey, so what's going on this year with production? Like, what's, what are we talking numbers? You know, what, what's, what's a good ratio you're, like, trying to stick to as far as number or clutches you're trying to hit this year? Man, I, we're, we're hoping for about 100 clutches. Um, it, it's looking a little lighter this year. We should have the right stuff go, but it's not looking as, as big as it was. I, I think the quality the quality will be pretty heavy. But like last year, it was just... We produced a lot. We produced a lot. I mean, okay. we produced a lot of stuff. Because even 100, 100, 100 today, 2024, when someone says 100 ball python clutches, that's a lot. Like, that's that's like, whoa, that's... How, you know, but you're obviously it's you guys, but in a sense, there's not a lot of people out there pushing those numbers. We're dialing like we're dialing stuff back, but just trying to make nicer stuff, cleaner stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you, you know, you you can't make those other clutches you made before. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not su- sustaining that. So yeah. we're definitely dial that back a bit. Just make a nicer stuff. Let's go back to the sunset pie talk that we were on. Okay. Um, one of the snakes I will say that was like probably most talked about, well, it was like an awesome snake to hit, but people thought it was too similar to another snake. It, I think it was a pinstripe, not pinstripe. Sorry. It was a sunset clown pied, right? Yeah. Um, oh my God. My mind just went, I don't even know where I was going with that. God damn it. This Brad, this happens every episode. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Dude, I feel you, man. We're getting old. Wait, what, what were we talking about just now? So you you were going back to to, to sunset pie, sunset clown pie. Then you went to the clown. Um, as far as like uh, people uh, talking oh, about oh, jeans or they look similar. Yeah. Oh, I got it. I found it. I found it. Whew, thank God. Okay. <laughs> so for instance, right? Like first and foremost, do you feel like you can make a better looking sunset clown pie than what you've had so far? For oh, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. But can you it's make? Just, but can you make? But can you make them with the repeat pairing? Like, meaning, like, if you try to, are you trying to repeat that same pairing to see if you can make a better version, or, or, or are you already on to the next one? How does that work? I'm curious. You're obviously going to breed those triples again, right? Don't get me wrong. But okay. we're trying to breed into other stuff too to to layer it up. You know, you, yeah. If you're not breeding for the next five years, you shouldn't be doing it. You know. Say that one more time, bro. Say that one more time. If you're not <laughs> breeding for the next five, you shouldn't be banging, man. I mean, you got to look ahead. That's why it's like, you know, COVID breeders that are fucking tapping out, they deserve to tap out. If you're tapping out and it hasn't been five years yet, 
you are not built for this shit. You're no. not. You're really not. No, suck it up, cupcake. I mean, get to work and handle your shit. Just work at it. Yeah. You quit, you lost. Just never quit. You know, you no, you shouldn't because it's no. kind of like, bro, it's like you. It, I don't know. Like, look at it like this. Like, you know, think about it as a kid. You build yourself a fucking fort, and maybe your fort's not as sick as the other homie's fort down the street. But what do you do? You just keep making it cooler, right? You don't tear the fucking thing down. Or maybe Hello? you do you build, but like, I don't understand why so many people just stop looking at the work that they're putting in and they say, I ah, fuck it, I'm done. You know, like it just. But also that those are people who aren't in it for the right reason too. No, know? they want that fast cash, and, and and dude, it's it is alluring. It's you know it, there is obviously a lot of money in this. Don't get me wrong. Right. But, so can you do you agree that this could actually be called the pyramid scheme if 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 certain people come in a certain way? It depends on how you look at it. I mean, you could say anything's a pyramid scheme, right? But if facts you, you follow through and keep breeding stuff like. Um, God, what was it special? What did I see some stuff Justin just did was special. Special, special been, spot no Yeah, special yeah. been around forever. Look, look what he just popped out with that. You know, that gene's been here forever. Yeah. But so what did he do? Mm. So where's the pyramid scheme with that? You know what I mean? It's yeah, and we're we're talking about also morphs that could just come right back out of nowhere too. A like thousand you're, you're, percent. You said earlier in the podcast that there are genes that are being now worked with that have been around for years and just nobody gave a shit then and now all of a sudden they do so it's just like everything is unpredictable in a sense yeah just get, hypo special they're yeah lazy. hypo yeah. dude i got rid of all my hypo stuff before why did yeah, you I'm do that dude I'm oh my idiot. god for yeah, a long time people stopped working with them they did we're kicking ourselves in the butt now but yeah yeah oh i screwed up Lord, bro you dude, a hypo sunset holy shit badass like killer combo and we're talking hypo is an age saver. That will, yes. like, hypo will make that sunset look good. Yeah, dude. There's it, it, it's so many, so many genes today, man. It's oh uh God. We have an aggressive yeah. like okay. Do you guys know this gentleman? God bless him. His name's Jared. He's been around for a long time. He goes to a lot of Tinleys. He has a really big bald head. Um, he's a, he, I love him, but this is fucking crazy. I can't believe there's still people out here to say that hypo sucks. This guy just said hypo sucks. Bullshit. What, what <laughs> generation is this man living in? This guy is 2018, bought his first DG energy right now. This is crazy. Because I will say, what really jumped people off hypo was DG at that point. Everyone was thinking DG's fucking, wow, why, why even work with hypo? Look what this DG's doing. Come to find out what makes DG better now is hypo. <laughs> For sure. Oh, yeah. Bunch of idiots. But also, like, you know, you, you can't, I don't know. Here's the thing. I feel like you... I think you were able to see a lot of things, Brad, and catch it, but you can't catch everything sometimes, right? Like, a hundred percent. Like, you know, you got to call yourself out, dude. I seen the first entities from Noah, dude, on uh, at Brian's house. I'm right. like, oh fuck, don't buy those things, Brian. They're ugly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And look what Entity did. So it's, you know, you, you got to be able to uh, to roll with the punches too, man. No one, you did, you know, you're wrong. Yeah, you know, and Enchi, man, shout to Enchi. I mean, Enchi. What a, what a gene right there. You know what I mean? Um, super Enchies and stuff like that. What, what Were you a big Super Enchie guy? Are you still considering like Enchie should be a super form in some things? Like how are you, look, how are you working Enchie when it comes to it being a super form? It, it doesn't have to be, but I, it's definitely cool for sure. Yeah. yeah are, you avoiding, are you avoiding doing Enchie to Enchie pairings though? Oh, no. No, no, not, nope, at, all. No, not oh. at all. Oh, cool. No. You know, you, you know, something that stood out to me and, you know, I, I try and, you know, only because I, you know, Marshall Mendez. Have you ever met Marshall Mendez, Brad? You know who Marshall Mendez is? Red Mountain Herbs. He, he's known as a chondro guy, but he's work. He works with Ultra Male, um, and he's been around for a while. Been around, been in the game. Uh, but like, if I see his face, probably man, I'm I'm so bad. So Marshall was the first guy where I went to his collection, and he was showing me some stuff, and I'm like, dude these look a lot cleaner than stuff i've seen out there and he told me oh there's probably blade in it that's why and i'm like oh really like he's like yeah i think i have you know when i originally invested in this ultra male like the stock had blade in it because i forget who he said it came from but he's he's pretty confident that blades is floating around in all his shit but he doesn't label it like he doesn't say that the blades in it and i always thought i was like that's crazy how there's a gene that is noticeably making this snake look better but you rather not mention it and I remember him saying this because he said it got confusing, I guess, or people like having a hard time IDing it. So he decided not to even label Blade at all, period. And, and and I'm curious, did you ever have any of that kind of relationship with Blade or 
do you know anything about that with Blade and and why Blade's really it's there out there, but it's really not like you 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 kind of randomly see it, but. I mean, what was the blade? The first thing that was uh, with the clowns with yeah. Tracy and Jared Carr's clowns, right? Yep. I think that's how it went. Yeah, I think they made some crazy looking reduced clowns. <laughs> Tracy Barker, uh, Jared Carr. I think it was. Uh, do you have any productions that you're labeling that have blade in it, or do you guys not have any blade stuff? I'm curious. I'm just curious. I'm, I'm sure we do, but I don't. I don't call it blade. I mean, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. There's there's so much stuff floating around. That you know, I'm sure in everybody's collections, but you pretty I, much just tell people the breedings. Uh, you guys, you know, I, I, I'm, I'll be honest. I could be an asshole, you know. I could like, there's some, some things in me that just make me want to make fun of things, right? And one of the yeah. things that, one of the things I can't help but to like laugh inside is like when someone's trying to like promote their blade. <laughs> when I'm just like, nobody gives a fuck. It's crazy how like, you know, God bless you. You know what I mean? I think you're right, but it's crazy how really nobody gives a fuck about blade. It's just, it's just crazy to me. I mean, I know we got it. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Just reduce whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> reduce whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't want to be rude, but. No, no, I feel, you know, I, I, I hear you. But it also makes a lot of sense if, like I said, Marshall has that same opinion on it and many other people. Like, you don't think maybe Justin and Ozzy and all these other people might have Blade floating, floating around it. It's just something that is probably in everyone's collection. It's just not. You know, not something enough worth labeling, I guess, for whatever reason. I just, I, I just think it's just, it's funny how the ball python game could just be that random and weird with something like that. Like it's, it's a crazy unique game that we do with this ball python stuff. You know, what and all, like kind of like, okay, Brad, did you ever think there'd be this many fucking names in the more in the morph game? Like, did you, did you think no. there'd be four versions of one morph? Why is there hurricane trick? Trick Daddy, all this other shit. Like, why? Why can't we just find out what one morph it is and just leave all the other bullshit names alone? Like, how do we come to an agreement? I, I think with the shed testing, that should stop. And yeah, I'm, I'm hoping shed testing should stop. I'm I'm sick of like everything changed in its fucking name, dude. You, you know what I mean? Like, you get you have a fucking gene, and then you have to. It's keep cool on. or not cool, you know? Just, right. Yeah. The name's not gonna fucking help. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> But it's almost like if you are trying to name something, what's your motive behind it? Like, why are you trying to now name something where we know clearly there's plenty other versions and stuff that rather people stick with than you now creating this other name? I just I just feel like so many people could just do that and 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 then other little followers could just pick up on it. And it's and I'm wondering when 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 will it end? I don't think it's ever gonna end. This will always be a thing where people are just naming shit out of the fucking blue. The shed testing should hopefully it, help. It should help. It should help. And it I think help. one thing I do want to talk to Darian about, because, you know, at the end of the day, Morph Market has a lot of control of what traits could be followed and supportive. It would be cool for, like, some sort of a morph agreement that everyone, majority base, agrees on. And we could uh, just one, yeah. And delete all the other shit out of fucking Morph Market. You know what I mean? That'd be that'd be epic if we could do that. Um, well, for sure. But, you know, that would piss off somebody for sure. I'd, somebody's going to want to get, you know, cancel somebody if, if they do that. I'll tell you that much. Can't make uh, everybody happy, buddy. No, you can't, no matter what. Yeah, even no. though, even if it makes the most sense in the world, it's still going to piss somebody off, which is unfortunate. Um, but, hey, I got to ask you, though, Kevin, I got to ask you personally, buddy, since yep. you've been hitting the scenes hard. First and foremost, give us some feedback on Tinley and March. How did Tinley and March go for you guys? Dude, we freaking killed it. Wow, tell me more. Dude, oh my god. We had the sale like the, the random sales from, from people. We had so many brand brand new people. It was crazy. We right. still uh I think what, what do we sell? Like 17? I think we had like about 17 sales, which wow. is like that's pretty damn good. You, know? you sold 17 snakes? <laughs> we sold se yes, 17 snakes. Dude, it was a good it was a, a good show. It was a real good show. And yeah, we I, I mean, it. are you would you say your average Tinley shows are good? Like you, like for the most oh, yeah. part, I would say so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Tim, Tinley's been really good to all of us. Yeah. And does it just come down to the avail availability? Is that why you feel like you're successful? Is because of the stuff you're bringing? I would, yeah, I would say so. I would say so. I, I, I think we, we fed them all good. All the snakes were fat and healthy. It was good. I think it's you, Kevin. I, I don't. Know. I think it's you. <laughs> it was the snakes for sure. I think it's, it's you. Me. Not me. It's the snakes. Hey, and listen. There's not a, every time I roll up to the Brad Boa booth, I see Kevin behind the table. <clears throat> I, I don't. I don't think I'd seen a moment. 
And I'm sure you go use the bathroom, but every time I go, I go there, I see you. You're always oh, there. It's right? hard. To, it's hard to He's leave. He's not allowed to use the bathroom. It's hard to leave. A bucket of catheter. Back, you know? put, a, put a catheter in him. <laughs> yes, we do. We put a catheter in him in the morning. That's how he rolls. <laughs> Uh, shoot. But like, dude, do me a favor, man. Like, how about we give some people some advice out there, you know, because there are people who are able to get spots at a Tinley and, and or even at a, a, a reptile super show. Um, but like, how does someone like, let's say someone who actually has good availability stuff, but, but they don't have a big name, right? How, how, how do you recommend someone kind of preparing for a big show without really having a big name? Um, I would say, Post online for sure. Yeah, you have to pay your dues. You, you have to go to all sure. the shows. You know, pay your dues, man. Pay your dues, man. Yep. But I, I would say, uh, yeah, you, you, have, you have to put stuff online for sure. Work, Dude, work Instagram, work, work Facebook hard for sure. Is there a that's like the best way? Is there pre sales that you have locked into before every ten lead for the most part? Like you know somebody. Sometimes, who wants- yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Right. Right. It all depends. And, you know, obviously, I think, and, you know, Brad, you got to give props to your, your boy here, man. You know, community is everything in this game. Yes. And you've got to tap in with the people. And, you know, I noticed Kevin's tapped in, man. Like, there's a lot of people who rock with Kevin and whatnot. Um, but do you feel like you give all credit to the shows on why you're connected so much, Kevin? Or do you feel like you just do a lot of social media conversation with people? Or, like, how do you feel like you've been really connected with the community? Um, I would say probably Tinley for sure. We talk to a lot of people in Tinley. Right. For sure. Dude, you know what's crazy? Your, your life could change in one Tinley. No, I, oh, 100%. And and I'm, I'm not even talking vending, just going. Like, just like you could meet somebody or yeah. something could happen where it sets One you connection, up. yeah. Dude. This one connection can change so much. I think I think every time I've Those gone are to important. Tinley, yeah. I've, every time I, f- I fly to any show, I have a new connection with something. No, it's, for sure, yeah. You're it, even man. small shows, like, like at least, yeah. That's, that's, where, that's where it starts, man. Like I, I love social media community stuff because that, that is where it starts. But if you're not getting personal with people and getting face to face and fucking actually showing that you're a real human, dude, how do you expect to really have a respectable brand where people want to actually go to your table? Like you got to have pay your dues. Like your fucking dad said, it all comes down to just you putting in the work where it happens the way it happens. Hard work, perfect timing. That's what it comes down to. You know oh, I mean? for sure. Yep. Just being but, constant, man. Just but it, being consistent, yeah, that's the best thing. But social media is that double-edged sword, man. As much as it could be awesome, and it could fucking fuck with your head too. And I feel like that's where people, you know, if you're doing this and then you feel like you're not concentrating enough on your work and other people work, then you need to stay off social media. I feel like if you get to that case, you know what I mean? Uh, no, but, for sure. Yeah. And you got a circle too. I mean, you got your boys. You know what I mean? You got your you got your people. You people you work with. Yeah. And, you know, and obviously when you're new, you're going to realize that certain people aren't maybe a good fit for you. Right. Like you're, and, and and I think it's you being that person to see those red flags. Right. Like and and, and I don't know, man, I, I know firsthand I am being mentored by somebody who was giving me actually wrong advice um, and, and I fucking couldn't believe it. Right. But I mean, how, how have you maybe mentored Kevin or maybe advise him on what kind of relations relationships he, he should be building with uh, other people out there. Maybe people that you haven't even met yet, Brad. So, I mean, first off, I mean, my two boys are my best friends, hands down. I love that respect. You know, like that's, that's my life. You know, like yeah, we pretty much mentor each other. Like when I bounce stuff off them, I, I respect, I respect them. I want to hear what they say. And it's not one guy doing like Brad doesn't make all the calls. You know what I mean? Like these guys definitely put in, you know, it's 50, 50. Yeah. You know, I, but I think Kevin's seen and Alex have seen through the years, just, you know, working with people and, you know, you just try to try to treat people how you want to be treated. Honestly, at the end of the day, I, I know that's corny or whatever. No, but, I mean, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of corny things I'm realizing that is actually real life shit, you know, and with yeah. this hobby and really that, you take care of people how you want to be treated that pays off longevity so much, you know, because you know, you could do really well in something and, and, and kind of be shitting on some people on your way up. Right. But then all of a sudden those people catch up too. You know what I mean? Um, oh. And you, it, it is, it, it's okay to be successful and let other people be, uh, let other people be successful too. You know what I mean? Oh. Uh, 
and, and, and I don't see how why other success isn't helping all of us as a whole, as a fucking reptile family. Like if, if someone's doing great and getting we good, we all do good. Yeah. We all, right. Well, and then, everybody does good. Yeah. yeah if you're doing good. Yeah. We're all doing good. You're look what you do. Look right. what you do for the hobby. You know, it's, it's amazing. We, you know, we need this. Right. You know, right. For, for sure. I just, the, the, the people that kill me are the ones that are like, they're selling a corn snake to somebody or whatever, and they're treating them like shit because yeah. it's, it's not a thousand dollar snake or a $5,000 snake, you know, yeah, like, they put them in a category like, okay, you're a fucking low, like you're, you're a low customer. I don't give two shits about you type of thing. Yeah. That's... It's like, it makes me feel like shit. Like, so me and me and my youngest son, this is off subject. We're going to a uh, gun store, and I was, dude, I was going to buy a pretty expensive gun. And, uh, dude, just, I get out of work. I grab the kid. And, dude, I'm in jeans and uh, tennis shoes, and I'm probably dirty. But I said, hey, can I look at that gun? It was like, I think it was like 7500 bucks. okay? Damn. And Kathy's like, yeah, if you want to get it. I'm like, all right, cool. Dude, this guy's like, um, uh, do you have the money for that? And I was like, so insulted, like just insulted. My kid was there. Oh, dick. Yeah, I was pissed, dude. I was gonna buy it, so I went and got the manager. Yeah. Pulled this guy off, like I was younger, extremely. Uh, <laughs> made a monster. You went, you went, you went full, you went full MJ on the guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's called full boa. It's called going full boa. boa. I, I will own that. I, I will own that. I love but, it. Yeah, I lost my shit, but honestly, like, who cares what they're buying? You know that you want to give them that same experience. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You don't know what that's going to do for that guy. You know what I mean? Or what that means to them. I mean, I think nowadays, even if they aren't buying anything and they want to support you, you can't fucking be mean to that person either. Like, Fuck no. like dude, so, you don't know. Like, people, people's life change in a fucking heartbeat. And what I mean by that, like, whatever person is dreaming about the animals you're making, they can't afford. It could just be that next year where they're balling and they can afford shit now. And guess what? You always be nice to that person. They're going to come spend that money with you, man. It's, okay. as, it's as simple as that. Like, you never know who you're dealing with. And that's why, like, I, I have a strong sales background. And, like, yeah, you know what? Tire kickers could be annoying, but I know how to work a tire kicker. You know what I mean? Um, I will have my days where I'm just like, oh, I don't care if I lose this one. I'll fucking – I'll do it. But I do know you cannot tell every tire kicker to fuck off. Like, that is a stupid thing to do. You just Correct. Have, Some take longer than others, but I have had so many – quote unquote tire kickers ask me a million questions and months later just drop all this money with me and i'm like fuck thank god i fucking didn't fucking block you because i will i wanted to but i didn't <laughs> so um you know that's why it's another thing like you know you got to be a lot better than just working with animals and breeding you got to be a fucking people person man like well, if you're, if that's that's the thing of 2024 if you're not as good at people skills as you are at breeding you ain't gonna probably make it in this right man you gotta remember why you're there like that takes a lot, yeah. MJ, my, like literally, like one of my best times at Tinley, and dude, we we made some good clips at Tinley. Don't get me wrong, had some stupid shows, you know, very fortunate. But like literally, one of the best times I had. Literally, I, I was in tears looking at this. I see my kids over, and there was a girl in a wheelchair. Right, dude, they're taking oh. their time. They're taking snakes out. They're letting her hold them. Dude, I was just like. That's making it, you know, like for me, you know, I achieved, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like whatever the snakes, whatever, cool story. But just seeing my kids do that, dude, blew, blew me away. Like yeah. I'm the, with kids, I'm the biggest softy. I went, I gave, dude, I went and gave that girl a, a pretty expensive snake. Yeah. Just to see her face and how happy she was. Yeah. Oh, you, you can't touch that life. Yeah. And it, I got, just, I got, oh no, go ahead. Yeah, just to see my kids do that for me was like, fuck, I made it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I achieved in life for me. That, that that would, I mean, that would really hit me pretty hard too. I'm in a good way. Oh. I, I, you know, and I will say, man, I feel like the biggest thing why I love what it is that we're talking about tonight is because this all relates to the kids. Like this, if you have a child yeah. who's into reptiles, this could set their life up for success. Like, look at Kevin and look at your your other son. Like, like they're groomed. You know what I mean? Not by yeah. force. They, they chose this life, you know, and right. this life is a lot better than so many other lives out there. I'll tell you that right now. You no, know? for sure. It's fun. And, it's and, a lot of fun. A lot of kids just need direction too, you know, and, and I, oh man, I, I want to say my moment with realizing how I love that I could connect to kids or even a teenager to want to do this was, um, you know, at Pomona, it's in the LA area, right? 
And yeah. we all know LA's rough. You know, there are a lot of rough places in, in this country, but LA is fucking it's pretty rough, man. And so I saw this teenage girl, she was like 14, and she was just so memorized by the super door for ticks I had at my table, right? Um, and she was just asking all these like pretty smart questions, and and I could just tell when a kid is just memorized, right? And right. she's probably at my table for like three hours, and then eventually she asked how much, and then she and then she came back and asked, like, you know, and then I was just like I looked at her, I'm like, I want to give you this snake so bad. Like, obviously, her, she didn't have no parents around. It would probably be very irresponsible to just give her a, a retic, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but you don't know how bad, like, I wanted. Like, I, I remember, like, when we eventually said bye, like, I gave her a shirt, stickers. I even hugged her. Like, I yeah. wish, I just wish I could have done something for this kid, even though giving her all that stuff was enough. But you don't understand. If she had parents and I got the okay, I would have gave her that fucking, which that, that snake was marked at 4K. I would have gave her that snake in a heartbeat. I would have been in a minute, right? Oh my God. No, and have no, I would have went to bed so happy too. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. That's and that's, good. and that's why I like, you know, I do know blessing financial, financial blessings could come your way so much in this, but it's like, you don't need to be greedy about it. That's the thing. Like I, I come from a background where I sold drugs. I, my friends robbed me. I robbed other people. Like it was a very yeah. cutthroat, greedy, like stubborn, like me, me, me. Like I have not, I've been so self List in this game and i and and i'm not like that normally normally i'm a selfish motherfucker but it, this is giving me so much where i feel like better giving back to people bro like I, a I, thousand I, yes this is, why, this is why i love where my life's headed because i just never felt like this before and now i get it and i see like it's about the next generation and just doing just being a good person you know what i mean like it's 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 the best bro it's the best life for sure yeah you know that's why i'm waiting for my kids to give me grandkids <laughs> Hey, hey, he's married now, though, man. Hey, you have a beautiful wife, Kevin. Like, uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. What's the deal? Are, are you working on kids? I mean, I not, know not yet. No, right. not yet. <laughs> Straight up bullshit. Oh, uh, shoot. <laughs> he wants it, but not yet. Shit, I'm, oh. ready, I'm ready. <laughs> that oh. is epic. Five more years. No, <laughs> not five years. Get to get me. Get to get, get uh, I don't know about that. How how much younger is Alex? Uh, two years younger. Two years younger. Yep. He's okay. And is he doing the same nine to five as you guys? Uh yes. Same okay. type of stuff. Yeah. Dude, all same company, huh, Brad? Like this is all under your. <laughs> no, he he actually is in a different company. For he's a contractor for Edison. He runs a crew. Okay. Yeah, he's like an operator. He's got a crew and stuff. So he he did good for himself. He's doing good. I'm proud right. of him. Nice. Right on, man. Um, and, and I gotta ask you as far as I know, Tinley is that show like a backyard show for you guys in a sense but but you, yeah four hours yeah do you do texas as well i can't remember you do other shows uh no nope we don't so just tinley that's your bit that's your bread and butter which we're doing uh schomburg this year i think we're gonna do st louis too nice actually so that's cool schomburg the, the texas one's way too far i think <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's a mission and, and you know less is more as far as traveling with reptiles is, is as far as i go so I don't blame you on that, man. That's why, like, people like Chad Holker and Troy Schroeder and, like, people who go cross-country and shit with their animals, like, dude, I don't I mean, And they got it down. You know, they do it. And I'm like, wow, man, you guys are fucking. That's a lot. Yeah. Dude, I'm the biggest retard in a vehicle, dude. I, I, <laughs> you don't want to sit still. Dude, you, you can't travel with me, dude. It's horrible. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Have you ever gone to a Daytona? Like, what's your uh, experience with Daytona shows, Brad? Oh, dude, back in the day, yeah, for sure. We did a yeah. lot. I mean, I never – I basically would sell for Brian in, in Daytona. You know, Whoa. Was, so, so Brian would send you down there to run the table and you would, you would sell shit down Oh, yeah, there. like, dude, I remember – dude, I remember. <laughs> I didn't know who Noah was, right? So here's right. this black dude wearing all this African gear, you know what I mean, the whole hookup. <laughs> and I'm, like, trying to sell this guy ball pythons. I didn't I – didn't, but he listened to me, right? Like, super cool. It's he like, listened okay. to me. Listen to my whole spiel and stuff like that. We had a great <laughs> laugh after, but yeah. <laughs> and Daytona is a historical, like we're talking, oh, like we're talking the roots of the That's founders. The, school, yeah. the right? old Daytonas was pretty kick-ass, yeah. Any crazy Daytona stories that that stick out in your head that you remember? Oh, I mean, I I you got. I was a lot younger, man. I drank a lot. <laughs> it was bad. Did, yeah, it was. I remember we had a hurricane one year. It, it was really bad. I, I just drank a lot. <laughs> I heard that. That's all everyone did down in Daytona's back. Yeah, like it was a big drinking fest. Like, um, I forget who told me that. Like, 
I think 7 a.m. when they would open up back in the day and there would be kegs tapped already and like people going after it right in the morning. You know what I mean? Oh, it's ridiculous, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, cr crazy shit. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of crazy shit, I, you know, we we're talking about like how much is to come with so many different projects in the Ball Python game. Where are you guys at with quad project stuff? Like, are you um, going to be rolling out some crazy stuff here or you're not really focusing too much on quad yet and just focusing on triples on i'm just wondering how far ahead you guys are looking down right now when it comes to the 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 stack recessive projects we're breeding for all that though. we're breeding for quads this year yeah yeah we're breeding for all that like definitely definitely trying to mix a lot of stuff together give me yeah. a quad give me a quad you guys wish you would hit right now the, uh we, we're breeding for well an ultra an ultra male uh pied sunset clown i think that'd be cool whoa shit yeah. okay. that, that'd be badass for sure that is nuts um because you know listen let's give some credit ultra male sunset <laughs> i dude, mean that's sweet that's, yeah that's filthy that's, Dope, that's, dude yeah yeah um that's insane. but we're talking about you know also two other heavy recesses in the mix so and that's another thing too right like like okay brad we're talking about puzzle stuff right why hasn't there been a legitimate puzzle clown out there yet? Dude, I don't know. There was a picture online I remember seeing, but I've only seen one. I saw one too, and then I heard supposedly that was a hat. That wasn't even a visual. Oh, wow. Which, that's so weird. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, we were definitely late on the puzzle game, like for real. Um, we're just really trying to ramp up into that now. Did you get into puzzle early, like when no. Bradley had and all that stuff? Nope. No, no, we were late. We were late to the game with puzzle for sure. So, okay, when somebody's at the level you at your guys's position right now, how do you get into a late project? Like, okay, how did you get into puzzle at, at, at like in a group way or just like one or two? Like, how do you in how does somebody like you invest into a, a late project? So we we got a lot of different genetics, right? We got a lot of different girls raised up. We we can just simply pick up some puzzle mail, whatever, breed it into that stuff, raise those babies up. You know what I'm saying? So. We, we just look at projects like that. You know, obviously, if you can bone up and get blah, 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 genes. A big group, yeah. You know, cool. But I'm like, I'm super funny. I'm bringing stuff in. Um, I, I try to keep our collection super clean. You, you know, type of deal. So I really, I, I hate bringing in new stuff. I know you have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Take type of deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, because yeah. it, I mean, it's like, okay, if your vision's working, you know you got to bring some certain shit in. You do. You got to – I mean, there's some stuff I'm trying to bring in right now that uh, hopefully it works out this year. You know what I mean? So Yeah. Like, I don't have any puzzle stuff, and I already, I mean, I it makes no sense why. I mean, I, but I'm also like – like, you can't do everything, you know what I mean? But I do know, like, puzzle, it makes a lot of sense to oh. have right now. Oh, no. Kevin thinks you can do everything. Look who his mentor is. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, I know. Dude, he's a fucking beast, man. <laughs> the dude scares me. That's your fault, Brad. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. He fucking scares me, though, dude. Um, but you know, okay, now going back, Kevin, I'm curious, you know, yeah, like your dad said, there are there are certain people who spend more like different money than other people. Like you have your loyal customers, I'm assuming, right? You got people who really that you've done right by and they've done right by you, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. How much do you feel like you're like taking on mentorships for some of your customers? Um, are you helping a lot of them out or? Like oh, we get, dude, dozens of, of texts on, on Instagram every day for people asking like what this is, what that is, like what, what temps to keep things at and we, we, we'll answer them all. So I wanna know what it, what what you feel inside. Okay, let's, let's paint a scenario. Let's pretend yeah. I'm your customers. I just bought a fucking sunset pied from you, right? Yeah. And then, and then I ask you, Brad, what should I do with this? Like, or I'm sorry, Kevin, what should I put into this? Like, I'm sure you get that. Like, have you ever got somebody who bought some crazy stuff from you, but then ask you what to do with it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. What yeah. direction do you want to go in? Right. So I'm just here. What do you tell that person? Like, just, what yeah. direction do you like? What, what snakes do you like? Yeah. yeah. What do you want to work with? What, what snakes you have and stuff well, like that? Yeah. What's your collection built on? What do you want to make at the end of the day? Well, you would say you would think a lot of these questions come from somebody who has like maybe one or two snakes. Like they don't have a lot yet, right? Uh, the guy buying like that expensive of a snake, they're typically not just going to have a couple. You know, yeah, like if, if if they're rolling five, ten, fifteen, twenty grand into a project, they're going to have a, a handle, right? They're going to have a handle on things. 
you would think. You know, they're going to have a few, a few things. <laughs> you would you think. Know, like like uh, Leviathan, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He, yeah, they they got some crazy stuff, right? They ended they, up buying They do, man. They, they, they really they, do. They, they do. They got some cool shit. You got to have them on your on your show for sure. Oh, 100%. I'm, I'm waiting for that right moment. Well, first and foremost, I got – I think I got I – got, I got Steve. Steven? Is it Steven, the husband? Yes. Right? yes. Yep. yep. I got Steven. I, I got Steven. I got to talk to Courtney. Hopefully me and Courtney could, could, could be cool. But anyways, I, I would love to have Leviathan on the show, um, mainly because they, they, they're they the total package. Uh, what I mean yeah. by that is like, dude, not only do they have six snakes, but they present them so sick. They know how to market their stuff. Yeah. And they're they're good people. Like they, they build like people support them because what they're doing for the community. And I think if you're going to be new – you got to start checking all these boxes like Leviathan has checked. I think that's a very important thing. And and, and they, any, anyone new should look at them as like an example on how you should be moving when you're new inside the ball python game. For sure. Yeah, they're, they're paying their dues. I mean, they're crushing it. They're doing great. Yeah. And, and cool. they got Sunset. They love Sunset. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, but, you know, okay, you know, would you say that like, – what would you say the last recessive – you felt like you had to eliminate out of your project or has there ever been a recessive that you felt like you didn't want, you wanted to stop working with? The only one we stopped working with uh, was hypo, but Oh, that, yeah, obviously that, yeah. that's like the, one of the only ones, dude, I'm pretty sure. You think hypo? Probably hypo. I, I don't do as much lab stuff as much. Yeah. As much lab stuff as I did. It, it and it's simply just, you know, you, you run into, Hey, I have X amount of holes. What do you want to work with? What What are you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, how'd you get yeah. back into hypo, Brad? Like, what? How did you like after? Dude, you I just I just started seeing stuff with hypo come out again. I'm like, oh my god, dude! I, I, I honestly, I think Brock made a freaking uh, a hypo sunset, like two males or two 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 of them out of like five eggs or something stupid. And I don't even think he understands how hard it is to hit that double, and he just did it. And I seen those. I was like, "Wow!" To me, that just blew my mind. They just kick ass. Yeah. So I just started seeing hypo again. Like, wow, that's you really need to bone up again on this. Now, okay, let's be real. What makes hypo better? True hypo. Holy shit! What do you guys have Dude. as far as any true hypo stuff in the future in the works or what? I would like to, we but we don't have. Well, yeah, we, we not right now. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. We don't. I, we don't. Did, that, did I just stress you out right now, Brad? <laughs> yeah, because, dude, he's like, well, we need more rats. Oh, yeah. Like, no, we're not. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. No, um, no, we're not putting another building up. We're not doing that. It's you know what? Because, like, okay, perception's everything. You know, people see the visuals that you guys are hitting and think, oh, wow, that's nice. You know, I want to do that. But do you have the capacity? Like, are you able to hold shit back, sit on it, and do what you got to do? No, Because isn't it all about numbers? Like, are we talking about, like, the more you have going, the better odds you have of hitting certain shit? Right? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's what it comes down to, right? Yeah, if, you, if you're trying to hit those triples, yeah, you just can't have That's one. why our collection I mean, got so big, yeah. Yeah. Right. Got out of, gets out of control, Kevin. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so legit, Kevin, you feel like you need another rack right now? Um, probably. <laughs> I, I I would say one more, probably. Hey, fuck off. I, I would say one more for sure. <laughs> would you guys use Freedom Breeders? What racks do you use? ARS. 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 Yeah. ARS. And you've been ARS for a long time. For that's been your choice for a minute. I, dude, I want to say we were probably that was our his, first big. Yeah. I think we were one of his first orders. What were you before then? Like melamine, or what were you doing before? Before bro, then? I was like nineteen seventy two melamine. It was it was bad. Dude, what was it like getting rid of all that stuff? Uh, <laughs> liberating. Like, it was like, just, oh, dude, it was so bad. Like we, I had to get like four guys over just to like help me like tweak these racks so I could get heat tape through them. Yeah, it, it, it was bad back in the day, you know. Oh my god, dude! Well, I started with I shit. I mean, just because I had no money coming into this and I wanted it bad, so I figured out the whole Home Depot storage rack thing that people were doing, right? So right. I thought I was able to do that, but holy shit! Like I had missing snakes. I had like, oh, oh my god! I went to the breeder, and I'll never forget when I went to Miguel's house for the first time. Just when I first saw my first Freedom Breeder rack, and I, all I want to do is open the tubs. I'll never forget like sitting there, like hearing the. <laughs> 
hearing the sliding and then right. like closing and then, yep. and then and then he's like he pulled out the aluminum rack like we're like the like the table and i'm just like oh my god and then you know and then he's like yeah they're four thousand dollars i was like well i'll never have one of these <laughs> um, and now i have a wall full of them so it's like dude it's fucking just it's, man, it's crazy how you could just evolve but but you got to work with what you have sometimes man well for sure man everybody starts out with something yeah, you know, and I'm proud to say my first year breeding twenty, even though it was 2020, I made over 100k in those fucking plastic storage Home Depot oh, racks. That's awesome, dude. I couldn't that's believe it. it. And the next year, I didn't even upgrade my fucking enclosure. I still kept them. I was like, dude, why am I gonna change it? It works, you know. And then the, <laughs> in the third year, I was like, you need to fucking all right, bro. This is enough. Like, you got you got a YouTube channel now. You need to stop doing this, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, you know, it's also because you know, another thing too, guys. I I try to preach like you know. Just because you come into this and you see someone who has a rack and all that, like you don't need to go all in like that so soon. Like you could just kind of wait for your time. Or I always say, man, if you could let the snakes pay for all that shit, let the snakes pay for it, you know. But mm -hmm. some people got different pockets than other people, you know. When you appreciate too what you have, right? Like right. Sometimes, sometimes too fast is not good, you know. It's just you roll with what you have for sure. Can you imagine what you would have if you had social media when you first started, Brad? Jesus, dude. Be crazy, right? Yeah, dude. It was so crazy back in the day. So all those all those boards was nuts, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it was nuts. And Kevin, how do you feel about, you know, nowadays you almost need everything rolling in a system to work, right? Like social media needs to be rolling. You got to go to shows. You got to do podcasts. Um, do you have a YouTube going? Like, do you feel like you, have you, what's up with your YouTube channel? Do you have any of that rolling yet or no? Dude, so I think about I was making them oh, probably what five years ago, and it was too much. I, I think the reels are like so much easier and faster yeah. and nicer, right? I, and then like I, I think the Instagram reels are the way to go. Nice for, for me, you know for sure. Right, because I dude, I used to spend out dude. I mean hours, you know, on, on, on videos for YouTube and stuff. You know, wasn't it fucking? But, it's agonizing, isn't it? <laughs> oh my god, it was so much work, dude. Yeah. And and literally, I, I don't, don't, don't want to say I don't want I don't want to say for nothing, but holy shit, you're doing a lot for no a pain. Lot, a lot. For, oh yeah, yep. Yeah, it was it was a lot of work. Yeah, that, we I'm, had hours of, of bloopers, man. They're funny. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, hated being on camera too. It was it was pretty funny. Yeah, man. I was so awkward too back in the day. Yeah, but uh, you know, once you get going, you go and like you know, Brad Brad avoided my channel for I don't know how many years, and he acts he's, like he acts like he's been out. yeah, he he acts like he's a regular on here now. It's fucking great. No, I, he's killing it. Yeah, so, you're coming back for sure, buddy. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. All right, listen, yeah. um, I got a wrap up question. All right, and then yeah, Brad, you're getting hotsy questions for sure tonight, buddy. No, uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah, you can't. Everybody gets them, and and uh, yeah, you're getting them for sure. But uh. Okay. <laughs> This is wrap bullshit. Go ahead. <laughs> wrap up question, real quick. Um, and both of you guys for I want to answer for both of you guys, but Brad, yeah, go first. Where do you see things in five years? If you could kind of give us a, a, a visual, the market, shows, social media, the ball python game as a whole. Where do you see things in five years? Dude, I, I just I don't see it stopping. I see it just everything crushing, man. It's it's elevating. Everybody's collections are elevating. Do you still see 30, 40, 50 K purchases going down in five years. Yeah, I'll do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know no, what I'm saying? For like, sure. Yeah. yeah, I'd buy it. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. I love that. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, dude. I mean, it's, I love what I do. I enjoy it. I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to say, man. What do you got, Kevin? What, what, what would you say the five years is going to hold for everything that we do, man? In the next five years, I'd say more, more quad stuff will be coming out. Um, I think what, what, when you make quads, I think you're going to be selling them for 20, 30 grand for sure. If you're making tons of desert ghost clown G stripe, I think it's going to be a $20,000 snake in five years, you know, for sure. It might be more, who knows? <laughs> and, and, and Brad, throughout your whole entire career, if it's rare and if it's not that available, it's going to sell at a high price, right? Like it's just kind of what it comes down to. For sure. With anything. Yeah. Right. Right. So in a Doctor, sense, like a horse or a snake, whatever. Right. But especially with what we do, there's always going to be that next thing that nobody has. Like it's kind of what we're, that's what you're we're searching for. for. There's genes now. Yeah. There's, yeah. Yep. Everybody's searching. Everyone's so. searching, man. But not everyone's hanging in there, unfortunately. But that's just how it goes. What are you going to do?
That's Suck right. it up, Buttercup. Get to getting. Suck it up, Buttercup. Get to work, motherfucker. Let's go. That's what I'm saying. Go pay your fucking dues, man. Stop fucking crying. God. Exactly. Nobody get your cares. ass up and go to fucking work. Nobody cares. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Oh, this is great. All right, listen. Um, hot seat questions. All right, I'm going to make these easy for you, Brad. I promise. All right, these won't be I'm easy. a window licker, man. Take it easy on this. <laughs> Uh, hey, do me a favor, Kevin. I want you to answer the same time as your dad, okay? This is for both of you guys. Oh, right? God. All right. Yep. All right. Best friends? Oh, yeah. yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right, guys. Get the likes up right now. Hot seat questions to wrap up this amazing episode. Quicker the better. You guys ready? Yep. All right. Hot seat questions coming in hot. Frozen thought or live? Live. Live. Yeah. Egg cut or no cut? No, no. cut. No cut. Condros or emerald tree boas? Condro. Emerald tree boas. Basins. No, pff, I love it. All right. Ball python. Ball python wise. Pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Post. Post. Yay imports or boo imports? Yay. Yay. It just depends. Yeah. One reptile you like to import to your collection, no matter what the like circumstances were, if it's like a dream reptile, what would what would that reptile be? Albino, oh, uh, albino blackhead, probably. Uh, okay. I, I heard, I heard, I heard from from Brad. What'd you say, Kevin? A, 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 a blackhead albino. Albino blackhead. Damn. Okay. Respect. Okay. Uh, yay sports or boo sports? Mm, we're 50 50, man. Do you have a favorite sport? Football, probably. Yeah, okay. probably football. Lions. Oh yeah. Co <clears throat> okay. So I was gonna say, do you, do you guys like college or NFL? I, he's more college for sure. I like college. Yeah. All right. Respect. But now that we're not, uh, now that we're not kneeling and shit, I'm I'm down. <laughs> I, I'm I'm back to it. Dude, honestly, I I stopped after that. I mean, I, I'm, a, I I'm sure. a sports guy, man. I grew up playing sports, and I would ne none of my teammates would ever knee back in the day. Like, no. like you're getting your ass whooped if you pull that shit back where I grew up. So how do you disrespect someone like dude, that? Dude, yeah, oh my dad, let's not go there, man. I, that that right there. <laughs> I didn't want to make it political. Yeah, no, no, you're <laughs> good. You're good. We'll keep it moving. Steak right. or fish? Steak. Steak. Oh yeah. I thought he said snake or fish. I'm like, no, snake. Steak. <laughs> steak. steak. Um, there you go. Big flexor or no flexor? No flex. No flex. Come on, man. Brad, dude, I feel Brad's a flexor. Like, like Fuck no, dude. <laughs> Come, walk down that hill, son. Walk You're down that hill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. Yay alcohol or boo alcohol? Boo. Boo. Respect. Van Halen or Sammy Hagar? Oh, come on, dude. I'm going Van. I'm going Van Halen. All day, every day. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Little word association. First thing to come to mind. You ready, Brad? Kevin? Oh, fuck. Okay. Yep. Milk. Cow. Oh, damn it. I can't say it. <laughs> yeah, you can say it. You got to. I can't, dude. <laughs> it just popped in my head. You got, what, uh, what was it? Tips. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, let's That's go. That's so bad. That's so bad. I'm yeah, sorry. we love it. We love it. All right. Substrate. Cocoa. A coconut, yeah. FedEx shipping. Uh, Chad Brown. Jesus. <laughs> Morph market. Uh, I don't even, oh god, I don't know how to answer this one. Yeah, it's, the sales. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> okay. it's great. Yeah, Least sales. favorite incomplete dominant. Uh, spider. Yeah, yeah, probably spider. Favorite incomplete dominant. Mm, lace. Yeah, for sure, lace. Ultimate double recessive project. Oh fuck! Uh, sunset puzzle. Oh, pff, damn. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I, love I would that. have to say that one for sure. All right. Instagram trolls. Oh god. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't even know how to answer that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, dude. I don't think we have any. That's a hard one. Um. Last but not least, you ready? Yep. This is gonna be. This, I hope you're ready for this one, Brad. Coolest reptile podcast in the world. Come on, man. The one we're on, baby. Let's fucking go, man. Hey, listen, this definitely exceeded my expectations. This was a great episode, Brad. Um, and also Kevin, you guys are fucking ultimate duo. And I want to meet Alex someday. I think maybe I met Alex. Was he at a and, and Tim, yeah, he was in Tim. Yeah, I did meet him, man. Well, I'd love to see him again soon. And uh, I gotta say, guys, we had just shy of a hundred people tapped in for tonight's episode. So uh, what do you have to say? All the love and support that you have on there, man, especially all your long-term customers, just everyone yeah. rocking with you. 
Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you. Honestly, just all all the years of doing this, man, just the community, you, you can't thank enough. There's not words to express what uh, what the people and done for our family and we'll be able to enjoy. Um, you really, yeah, you, you can't even, I don't have words for that myself. Yeah. You know, we, we really do have a great community and a family at the end of the day. I mean, it's, it's we're a lot thankful of for sure. Yeah. We're, we're very thankful. And I got to tell you, man, again, Brad, your, your boy's holding it down out there. I got to tell you, Kevin's doing a hell of a job. Um, and just you. You know, making that brand even better as it is. And I got to tell you, keep it up, Kevin. Proud of your shit, bro. And uh, looking forward to having you both back on again on, on Trap Talk. That's for sure. Oh, hell yeah. Um, best way to follow you, obviously, is Instagram. You would say that's like you're more heavy on the Instagram side of it, things, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Instagram, okay. for sure. I don't even think we can get on Facebook anymore. Yeah, no, we can't. <laughs> we, yeah, we really can't even get on our Facebook anymore. Oh, you got hacked off? Yeah, hacked off. You know yeah. what? Dude, we got like monster numbers on there. There's probably people that message us. We probably think they're the biggest assholes going. We just can't get on any of our messages. Damn. All right. Well, whoever's hearing that, please hit them up on IG. Facebook is no longer. Um, but, guys, please do me a favor. Go give them a follow. All right? Mad love and respect to both of you guys. I appreciate it. But it's a wrap. Brad Boa, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Thanks, buddy. There we go. Thanks for having us. Hey, dude, thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon, man. Take care. All right, bro. Be good. Peace. Woo! That was epic. That was epic. Thank you so much, anyone who tapped in. I got to tell you, three years I've been waiting for this episode, and it was really cool to see uh, Brad and his son come in here and just kind of slay it. They killed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Get the likes up right now. All right, hit that subscribe button, um, notification bell. You'll be reminded of all my podcasts, segments, uh, uh, you know, it's cracking here on the Trap Talk Reptile Network. And uh, thank you again. Drop a comment too in the comment section. Let me know what you like best out of uh, this episode. And remember, if you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to get tapped in behind the scenes and just really just dedicate or to see some hang out with some dedicated reptile keepers, um, come join the Trap family. First link in the description below. Uh, there's a Discord, amazing Instagram group chat. There's events for all my trappers going down this year. And uh, all my Patreon members are invited. All right. So have a good weekend. I hope this Thursday night gets you in the mood to have a really good weekend because it's all about having fun. I had a really good, good time. Appreciate all you guys for pulling up again. You guys are amazing, man. What, an, what a beautiful community. I love the reptile world. It's an amazing place. All right. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. And I'm out.